Campaign on Tuesday. Trump said, announcing his campaign, Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. Trump, worth about $9 billion, spoke at an 11 a.m. rally at Trump Tower in New York City. He added, Our country is in serious trouble. We don't have victories anymore. When was the last time anybody saw us beating, let's say, China in a trade deal? They kill us. I beat China all the time. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They laugh at us, at our stupidity. He said that Mexico is killing us economically. Trump, famous for his wealth, real estate finesse, and The Apprentice reality TV show, had previously toyed with the idea of the presidency before. He talked about running in the presidential elections in 2008 and again in 2012, but never formally announced. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Zoo visitors watch the mating rituals of the ice cream shop staff, and a serious co-worker puts on headphones to focus on his sandwich. Happiness is perpetually fleeting, so try to savor the next few minutes before it disappears once again. This is The Onion Week in Review. FBI officials announced they just can't bring themselves to bust a man who recently downloaded every season of the 1990s television show Picket Fences from a BitTorrent website. While stressing that pirating copyrighted material is strictly illegal, federal authorities expressed their sympathy for the man and claimed that perhaps the story of Sheriff Jimmy Brock and the strange events in a small Wisconsin town is all he has left to cling to. We have more than enough evidence to bust him for piracy, but if the poor guy really wants to watch all four seasons of a 20-year-old CBS drama that nobody remembers, He's clearly going through a pretty big rough patch right now. And frankly, we don't need to make it any worse. For statistical purposes, we have seized all private data from your personal computer and we are disgusted with your recent internet search history. You sick f For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And you know what? Apparently there's some sort of technical difficulty on the network's end regarding that toll-free number. So I'm going to give out the alternate number. You can still try it. They're, they're telling me that it should work, but some calls may be not so great. So if it sounds really awful, then we're not going to move forward with it. So I'll give you an alternate number. The uh, sort of the back lines, if you will. 603-435-1105. That is not toll-free, but who really needs toll-free lines anymore unless you're calling from a payphone? 603-435-1105. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Ridley. And Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com. And coming up tonight, Dave, you wanted to talk about the Bernie Sanders ambush interview, so, so-called, so that <laughs> wasn't much of an interview, but I guess he did answer one of my questions. Uh, By just saying you were rude or yeah, something, right? Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yes, right. So we can talk about that. Uh, also, I got a lot of weird and interesting stuff uh, in the news here tonight and some really not so great news, like Virginia banning cuss words in public, apparently, according to... Countercurrent news, the feds tightening restrictions on 3D printed gun files online. I think that's where we should start tonight. And then a very interesting story about uh, should you be eating LSD for breakfast, asks vice.com. That and much more. Of course, you can share your thoughts here tonight. Uh, 855-450 free. Alternate line is 603-435-1105. And also we do have Skype. That should be working just fine tonight. So if you want to Skype into the show, our Skype username is lrn.fm. Let's start with the update here on the 3D printed gun, because it's been something we've been following here on Free Talk Live with uh, Cody, who is the the guy who is behind this. Uh, I'm spacing out on his last name at the moment. I don't know if you happen to recall. Wilson. I don't remember. Cody Wilson, that's what it is. He's the guy behind Defense Distributed which is the company who released the plans for The Liberator about I don't know, two years ago, I think at this point, at least probably two years. And as you may recall from this story, the plans for The Liberator were forced at the threat of violence by the government to be taken down from the Defense Distributed website. And they had used this really obscure part of the U.S. regulations to justify this. In fact, they were demanding that they take it down Pending some board's review, I think it was the State Department or whoever, uh, pending their review of their regulations to determine whether or not it should be taken down. 
So they were sort of ordered to take it down as a peremptory measure because the government was going to make some sort of ruling about this. And uh, Yeah, they, no prior restraint in the land of the free. Right. They, they re reluctantly did remove it from their site, which, of course, has done nothing to stop the liberator, right? Because, you know, the, uh, what is it, the Barbara Streisand effect, when some government or company tries to crack down on certain information to prevent it from getting out that just usually uh pro that just usually promotes its spread even information further information wants to be free and it is the liberator plans are out there you can go right now to the pirate bay website i know that's one place you can get these plans from and i'm sure it's a simple matter of googling if you want to find other locations where the, these are being hosted you got to just imagine how powerless the authorities feel when while they're doing this. I mean, they, like, I like imagining that they're like the uh, they're like the uh, the Monty Python character. You know, it's like put put okay. You know, did you bring the rack to torture her? Yes, I brought the rack. That's a dish <laughs> rack. <laughs> well, uh, twist it, rack. use it anyway. <laughs> you know, so he just pretends like he's torturing her with yeah. the dish rack. Uh, that's kind of what the feds are doing here. You're right. They're they're kind of pretending like they can have some sort of impact, and they can't. So here's the latest. Well, in the it'll story. be an impact, but it just won't. It, it won't do anything to keep the information from getting around well, right I think. it's it's only at this point has only impacted defense distributed the company who released the plans initially but they're already out and there's no putting that genie back in the bottle so for those of you who don't know what we're talking about 3d printers now exist you can print parts and then assemble those parts they're very hard plastic parts in this case uh with the liberator i believe the only part that is not 3d printable at least at this point is the screw there's one metal screw uh that holds it together although i think they're probably holds 3D it metal. together briefly <laughs> yeah, i think there are probably 3d metal uh 3d metal printers out there but those aren't what are in people's homes it's the the hard plastic we'll give uh, it time stuff. oh yeah absolutely but uh anyway so yes there's this there's gun and as you pointed out dave it's not the most reliable of weapons it will probably reliably shoot once how many shots passed once you will get through <laughs> That's a good question. So, you know, it is use, It is sort of usable for a last-ditch firearm situation, perhaps a, a gun that's not going to trip a metal detector for the most part, with the exception of that, that one screw. Uh, anyway. And that pesky round of ammo that you've got in there made of, made of lead and steel or whatever. Yeah, good point. So, But, you know, you could also take the parts and transfer the parts separately, right, and then put them together wherever it is you're going. So the notion of a 3D printable gun, this is from Wired.com's Andy Greenberg, has become the perfect flashpoint in a new conflict between digital arms control and free speech. Should Americans be allowed to say and share whatever they want online, even if that speech is a blueprint for a gun? The State Department has now answered that question with a resounding no. In the last few days, the State Department has issued two new statements confirming its intention to act as a gatekeeper for when Americans can legally publish online data that could allow someone to digitally fabricate a gun. And those statements outline how it plans to restrict those publications as a controlled so-called foreign export of munitions. Earlier this week, the State Department sent a letter to the controversial gun access group Defense Distributed, confirming that it will require the group to get specific permission from the government before publishing its 3D printable gun files online. That warning comes more than two years after the State Department sent Defense Distributed its initial letter telling it to take down the gun files from its website, pending a decision about their legality. So this is not necessarily anything new except for the fact that they've finally done what they said they would do and, and issued a made a, an, a, 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 a warning or ruling or whatever. Correct. And so he doesn't have to do anything new, correct? Well, now they're saying he has to go through them if he wants to release any further. They already kind of did anyway, had to have to do that. That's pretty much kind of, I mean, they were already telling him, hold off. Well, no, 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 no. Now what happened was him, he, he had released the plans previously. That he made they, international headlines. They had him take them down. Correct. And now they're saying just keep them down. And further, right. ask us for permission if you want to release anything else in the future. So yeah. basically destroying his, his business. I mean, if the if Defense Distributed was, was a business, I'm not right. sure if it was like a not-for-profit. You know or, what's so frustrating about this is the extent to which this helps the this would help uh, the central government of the United States if, the, if it was a central government of a free country or a relatively free country. And in fact, I think the Americans, you know, 
50, 60 years ago probably would have been pretty comfortable with the idea of, of uh, weapons pro- proliferation inside the United States when because you say they had just been them, saved mean? from invasion by the fact that everybody had a rifle, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to it, some extent. You so know, that's and, what you mean by it, it would help them? I mean, it would help the government because... It would help would... any legitimate government. Weapons proliferation inside a country and the information to make weapons, even heavy weapons, is mm-hmm. good for a good government, right? A, a government that uh, wants decentralized power, wants to be protected... It wants its people to be protected from foreign invasion. It wants them to be able to protect their homes. That kind of government would benefit from this kind of weapons technology proliferation inside the country. So if the government were respected by people, then they would benefit. But if the government were uh, you know, a tyrannical government, then they would be at risk right, from people having guns. Well, I think even if they were not respected by people, they would still benefit. In fact, well, the federal government the probably benefits from weapons proliferation inside the United States because, again, the, there's all kinds of things that Americans are safe from that, that we wouldn't be safe from if we didn't have a lot of guns. Sure, but from their perspective, they don't care about that, right? They, no, they only care about themselves and their right. families. And, and, and from their perspective, they don't want you to have guns because that is something you could use to defend yourself against their depredations. Not I mean, very effectively, probably. I mean, I don't think when you use firearms to protect yourself from the government, yeah, it can hurt the government, but it, it really doesn't ever seem to bring freedom. I No, I, I agree yeah. with you. Look, I, I'm not in favor of using violence to solve the problem of the government, but, but that is the classic excuse for allowing uh, you know, one to bear arms, right? The classic reason for that is that beyond your own personal protection, it's a check against the state. Yeah, if fighting were to break out, it's better for a lot of guns to be in the hands of the people. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE, but that may not be working correctly. So call us at 603-435-1105, and that's pretty much a guarantee to work. 603 435 1105 or Skype in. Skype username's lrn.fm. We got more on the way about Defense Distributed and what is happening to them here from Wired, plus your calls and thoughts about whatever you want. This is Free Talk Live. Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust ListenClear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And right now, you can try ListenClear absolutely risk-free with free shipping. We'll even give you free batteries for life. So call now, 1-800-940-5957. ListenClear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. Call for your 100% risk-free home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now. 1-800-940-5957. That's 1-800-940-5957. 1-800-940-5957. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many 
manufacturers. If you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251, 800-917-8251. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. Of course, you may join us. Maybe toll-free. You can try the number. I'm not sure how well it's working. The phones are kind of screwy over at the network right now 855 450 free and here's a number that will almost guaranteed work 603-435-1105 603-435-1105 ian and ridley in the studio here tonight we're talking about 3d printable guns the federal government is they say at wired.com tightening restrictions i don't know if i would describe it as a crackdown because no one has gone to prison yet over this so far Defense Distributed, the company uh, created by Cody Wilson to promote these 3D printable guns, to promote the plans for them, to get them out there to to people. Uh, they have been told to pull their uh, their plans down for the Liberator a couple of years ago. Now there's a new ruling by the State Department saying that there's some kind of uh, obscure federal regulation, the International Trade in Arms Regulation, ITAR, that is the excuse they're using to prohibit the distribution of these files, calling it a controlled foreign export of munitions, meaning that they are categorizing these plans. These are this is digital information. It's ones and zeros. Uh, they're categorizing this this particular ordering of ones and zeros as a export, a foreign export of munitions. Meaning that because Defense Distributed is putting this out for the entire world to receive, the federal government believes that it is theirs to decide what to do with. That they will decide whether or not you can put this out there. So it seems like this situation has not become that dangerous where the authorities just aren't really getting much traction. But I just wonder what will happen you know, in five years or something like that if the inter- internet is more centralized and the authorities are willing to take more violent action against people who maybe possess copies of these things or distribute mm-hmm. them from Iceland or something like that. And of course, Iceland is going to be possibly an important place in this sort of situation because i think they have uh this like a like a i don't know they're they're a lot more friendly uh when it comes to storing and spreading this kind of information and they want journalists from other countries like refugee journalists to come to iceland to report on what's happening in places where they can't be safe and yeah i i hope it doesn't get worse than this but but i would certainly hope that cody wilson is thinking about leaving the united states at this point because he's an austin-based activist We've had him on the show, I think, from the Liberty Forum in the past. And this is the United States government telling them, the, telling him and his company that 
that they're in control. The government will be in control as to whether or not they can release any future 3D gun plans. And there's no reason to believe that the answer is going to be yes. Anytime Defense Distributed comes up to the State Department and says, oh, we've got this new plan for this cool 3D gun. Uh, can you please approve this? They're going to, of course, say no. I mean, this is obviously total control and lockdown, in my opinion. You can share yours, though, at 603-435-1105. Well, I guess if defense has to be distributed, then so does the distribution of information about well, that's defense. True. But it has to come from somewhere, right? So yeah. somebody, somebody, some inventor or or team of inventors has to come up with the plans for this gun. They have to test the gun. They have to tweak. They have to refine and then come up with the final plans that are worthy of being released. And so, well, I mean, my initial reaction here is you got to get defense distributed based out of some other country. Well, you know, someplace I mean, with more freedom is of that speech. Necessarily safer. I mean, yeah, in Iceland, Iceland, it might be. But you know, if the authorities uh, think they run the whole world, and uh, so there's, you know, you know, there's there's more safety in overseas places, and there's less at the same time. So here's a little bit more information from Wired.com. Actually, a decent amount from Andy Greenberg. In a separate filing to the Federal Register last week, the State Department also wrote that it intends to require prior approval for the online publication of any, quote, technical data, unquote, that vaguely defined would allow for the creation of weapons, an even broader swath of files. The state agency's statement warns that publishing those weapon files to the Internet with its global connections could amount to violating the International Trade and Arms Regulations, ITAR, by exporting controlled weapons data to a foreign country, hardly different by its definition from sending missile schematics to Iran. So maybe it would have to be released through WikiLeaks or maybe a new organization will come online that is more about spreading technical mm -hmm. information. Uh, the technical underground, techunderground.com. Uh, it probably already exists, but it doesn't a bad do idea. that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, I think you're right there. I mean, to have the release of this information go distributed is a good idea, but then you'd still have to protect the manufacturer or the original source, right? Well, you, again, if that would be there's the got to be a way that the original source can do it and spread the information without anyone knowing they did it. There, you'd think there's a way, but of course, everyone who does it thinks there's a way, and then a lot of them get caught. So, Before posting information to the internet, you should determine whether the information is so-called technical data. You should review, this is a quote from the government, you should review the United States munitions list. And if Oh, yeah, I've got all day to yeah. review the United States militia, munitions, what, list. munitions list. Yeah, And if there is doubt about whether the information is technical data, you may request a commodity jurisdiction determination from the department. Oh, yeah, that'll only take six months. Or years. Uh, reads the State Department's filing, posting technical data to the Internet without department or other authorization is a violation of the ITAR, even absent specific knowledge that a foreign national will read the technical data. So this is a general prohibition, essentially, against not just defense distributed, but against any online publication uh, or the, the online publication of any technical data. So does that mean that everyone who is currently sharing the plans for the Liberator on Torrent, because again, as I mentioned, you could go to a variety of websites, including the Pirate Bay, download this uh, Torrent, and then you are one of the people who is distributing that particular information. So if that's the case, does that is that you know this is what you predicted a few moments ago without having read this article, Dave Ridley, that you know they may be targeting individuals as a result of this. Well, Scary there's just got to be. It, I can't wait until someone has come up with a way to create anonymity distributed, right? So that anonymity is easy and every computer sort of has it again. I wonder mm -hmm. if that's ever going to happen. And of course, and when it does, will we even know that we really have it or will we always be, live in fear? Well, we have, uh, of course, There's there are ways to be more anonymous online. Tor mm -hmm. is available. It is one, mm -hmm. of the, one of the more trusted systems, although some say it shouldn't be trusted because it was originally designed by, what was it, the Navy or something like that? Uh, but, you know, the I think where there's a will, the geeks will find a way. I, I do trust in the geeks, Dave, and I think that you know they are on the ball on this kind of stuff, and they, they generally can keep ahead of the government as far as you know developing ways to keep people safe online. So I'm not too worried about... I, I don't think this is the end of online guns, right? Like, th this is not the oh, end no. <laughs> of 3D no, it's just, printed It's just guns. a question of, you know... It's a bump do, in the road. That's how do it. the people who are making them say, stay safe? 
The State Department's renewed attempt to control the spread of gun files online comes just as the conflict between the control of digital weapons exports and free speech is coming to a head. A month ago, Defense Distributed sued the State Department on First Amendment grounds, as they should do arguing that its right to free speech is being violated by the State Department's demand for prior approval of its printable gun file uploads. Quote, Just because information can be used for some bad purpose doesn't make it illegal to publish it. Now, of course, the government is going to argue likely that the state has an overriding necessity to control this information, that free speech does not, you know, the free speech requirement as supposedly protected by the Constitution, doesn't rise to the level of the importance of keeping these The importance of keeping away. people from having single-shot revolvers? Yeah, we'll come back with more on Free Talk Live. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Ian and Ridley in the studio tonight. Our number is normally 855-450-FREE. I don't know if that's working tonight. So you can try our alternate number, 603-435-1105. That's 603-435-1105. Your comments are welcome on 3D guns or whatever you want to bring up. You can, of course, take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. We're talking about the latest uh, demand by the federal government. Their claim of power, actually is a more accurate term, claiming that they are the ones who will decide whether or not anyone will ever be able to release 3D gun plans to the Internet at large. We'll continue with the story here, but speaking of Internet privacy, there are certain things you can do to help protect yourself online, and having yourself pro-XPN is one of those things. In fact, what pro-XPN does is, is it, it encrypts your Internet connection so that when you're using ProXPN, your internet service provider won't know what you're doing online. So let's say you'd like to do something like, you know, work on some 3D printable gun plans or something like that. You know, you want to use a service like ProXPN and then probably use Tor on top of that to add some extra anonymity to the mix. But ProXPN is a great way to make sure your internet service provider, as well as uh, common criminals who might want to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets, are not spying on you online. Whether you're on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or Linux, you can download their app over at ProXPN.com FTL. And when you use our discount code... Uh, you'll get 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live, and 50 as in 50% off. Now, that, by the way, is good for the lifetime of the account, so when you're ready to uh, go for number year number two, you'll get the same awesome deal. And with premium, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked Websites. ProXPN also does not keep records of your online habits, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Now, you can go right now and start for free at ProXPN.com slash FTL, but don't forget promo code FTL50 for when you're ready to upgrade to premium and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL with code FTL50. As we continue here with uh, more on the State Department claiming they're in control due to some bureau, uh, bureaucratic regulations known as ITAR. This is the International Trade and Arms Regulations. They're essentially telling anybody with 3D printable gun files that they want to put online, not just defense distributed, but you, perhaps, if you are working on 3D plans for, uh, for a gun, they're telling you that you need to talk to them first, that they are in charge if you are to post technical data to the internet without their departmental authorization, it could be a violation of said ITAR, which may result in, I don't know, something bad happening to you. I presume possible prison time, but you know, I don't have the ITAR in front of me, and nor am I really interested in looking through said uh, pages, likely in pages of federal regulations. Well, Let's- it is the federal way to do something to someone and then do something else to them a little bit later, and then a year later, arrest them. Yeah, that's true. It's what they did with the local head shop here in town. They raided the I head shop. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, about several fat months stuff. later, several months later, they uh, they actually put the warrant out for the arrests. By the way, that trial's been postponed. It was supposed to start this week in federal court. Uh, the head shop raid trial that's going to be now postponed until September. Was Keene Police Department implicated in that raid? Did they, they do. They were involved. They well, were, they were in the raid, but did they do anything in relation to the uh, the more recent uh, charges? And the was no, there an no, arrest I don't think or? So. Um, I don't know. I can't say for sure they were they were not involved in the arrest. Okay. I suspect it was DEA who made the arrest. So, because it's a federal case, and so they they actually arrested them long after the raid. That's correct. Or, okay. Yeah. All right. So a little bit more here from Wire.com. The state State Department's renewed attempt to control the spread of gun files online comes just as the conflict between the control of digital weapons exports and free speech is coming to a head. Defense Distributed has sued the State Department on First Amendment grounds. And, uh, you know, they're saying it's their right to free speech, and it's being violated by the demand for prior approval of its printable gun file uploads, which I'm sure will not be granted when they ask for approval. 
Their attorney, Matthew Goldstein, an export control lawyer representing Defense Distributed, said, quote, just because information can be used for a bad purpose doesn't make it illegal to publish it. This isn't just a firearms case, even though it deals with firearms. It's really a free speech case. But Defense Distributed lawsuit also includes the argument that the group's Second Amendment rights, its access to firearms, were trampled by the State Department's export control restrictions. Cody Wilson, the group's founder, argues that the State Department's new declaration of its control over online gun files only makes that violation clearer. He says it's a land grab. With this instituted set of powers, you have a First and Second Amendment in name only. Isn't it interesting how, you know, back in the day, the State Department, you know, they were supposed to hurt communists overseas, right? Or at least do something overseas. They Is that what they were they for? I don't they know. They weren't supposed to be like a danger to Americans themselves, right? They were, they were supposed to be outward looking like the CIA was supposed to be outward looking and isn't. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, uh, when you create a government program. You never really know what it's going to end up looking like uh, one year, 10 years, or 30 years later. They were pretty bad at, at, at hurting communists, too, actually. Well, if you think about it, this, it was the State Department in 1956 that like actively supported the governments of the Soviet Union in its invasion of Hungary, at least verbally. A State Department spokesperson who was authorized to speak to Wired only on background said that the notice in the Federal Register wasn't intended to target specifically 3D-printed guns and that its timing with Defense Distributed's lawsuit was a, quote, unfortunate coincidence, unquote. He pointed out that the filing isn't yet final and that it remains open to public review and comment until August, as though oh, they're going to turn I it can, around. You should be reading that in the voice of that. Who was that uh, policeman that the cop was interviewing in uh, V for Vendetta? You know, the cops looking around trying to say, hey, what happened to this lady? And what happened at this camp, you know, thir- you know, 13 years ago? And he's talking, he's talking to this government minister or something, mm-hmm. and the way the guy talks, he's like, I don't recall precisely. <laughs> the, many of us did many things, but it's it, right. it, it, that's the voice that it, you know. I feel like I'm hearing, even even though I'm hearing yours. It's definitely creepy. He also argued the dis- restrictions wouldn't limit the publication of discussion or illustrations of guns. Only quote technical data for fabricating arms. Look, we're clear on that. It's pretty clear that they're talking about the technical data here, not people chit-chatting about guns on some sort of uh, Facebook. Yeah, that will be banned later, or maybe it already has. Who knows? It depends on who you are. That's a good point, Dave. That you know there is the problem with sort of opening Pandora's box here, and if you can restrict one kind of speech about guns, why shouldn't they be able to restrict other kinds of speech about guns? And that will be their argument eventually. Well, you know, in front of a court, you let us do this, right? Exactly. That's even though you didn't, we just did it. (laughs) <laughs> well, the courts if the courts don't stop it, then y- the argument would be that you let us do it, right? Yeah, so if, as if defense, the courts are us. If the defense distributed suit fails, then that absolutely will be an argument that the regulators will make later. And then they'll say, well, look, this was challenged. And, uh, you know, the Supreme Court backed up the government on this. It's pretty clear that the, uh, you know, that the, the right to bear arms is not being infringed. You can still bear the arms from the gun manufacturers here in the United States, but you just can't make your own. And that, uh, you know, we've got to keep control on these things. It's important. Control is very, very important to the government. We investigated whether we should stop you from doing things and learned that we should. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they'll do it more as well. So he, uh, let's see, let's be clear, this is the government bureaucrat, quote, let's be clear, general descriptions, public discussions, and imagery of defense articles, including firearms, have never been subject to these regulations and will remain unaffected under these proposed revisions, he wrote in a follow-up email, essentially rewording what he had said earlier. As Wait, for the- that, that doesn't help either, though, because remember how the, the Secret Service actively, you know, spoke up uh, to say, you know, to say that the, the Liberty Dollar was not a violation of any currency laws or anything like that. And then a few years later, they just went and stole all the Liberty Dollars that they could find. And, and- charged Bernard von Nothaus with counterfeiting. Yeah. Who, by the way, is going to be speaking at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Oh, good. Coming up next week. And I don't think we've seen Bernard von Nothaus since the first Liberty Forum, something like I just ago. wish these people would live here. You know, I think they would just be safer. No. Cody Wilson should move here and Bernard Vernon not house. I'm should with move you. Here. I'm with you, Dave. But it just doesn't seem like, you know, people love to stay where they're where they were born. I mean, it's it's really hard to get I people don't. out of there. <laughs> oh, I'm with you. I am, really. 855 450 free. Let's talk more about what you're referencing there, the Free State Project, and how that can help this in moments. It's Free Talk Live. 
In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, we invite you to join us here on the radio waves. You can try the toll-free line. Can't guarantee it's going to work. 855-450-FREE. If not, go for 603-435-1105. Those are the uh, sort of the LRN studio lines. 603-435-1105. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Ridley. Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com. Dave, what will people find if they visit 
RidleyReport.com. Well, today's video, I actually, I just upload, uploaded it, but it hasn't published yet. Uh, and it's, it's just a video of me ambush interviewing some uh, state reps. I love the Ridley ambush interviews. And so you took a trip to Concord or was this not recent? Oh, this is not recent. A while back. Okay. Because uh, those ambush interviews are always gold and it doesn't matter how quickly they're published, right? They're always entertaining. I think so. I mean, the issues eventually get old. True. But, uh, you publish uh, them within a few months, you're good. Yeah, that's about the best I do. <laughs> so uh, check him out. Dave Ridley is sort of like a window to the world of activism here in New Hampshire. And that's actually what we were touching on a moment ago uh, before we went to break was the uh, the idea of why don't these people, these people being movers and shakers in the liberty movement people like cody wilson from defense distributed uh bernard von nothaus from the liberty dollar why don't these people make them move to new hampshire where they can be surrounded by literally hundreds of liberty oriented people who are also activists who could help come to their aid in a variety of different ways when attacked by the federal government and uh, what i mean what did you mean when you were when you were saying that well i just think that when the authorities look at Free staters, they 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 have to ask themselves: Are we willing to engage with this entire movement or our large portion of it? That's what they have to ask themselves before they attack a New Hampshireite, or particularly a New Hampshireite who is a known liberty activist, you know, with connections in the in, in the remainder of the liberty movement. Uh, I just think that the, I think one of the reasons the Free State Project has not been heavily targeted yet, and maybe it won't be, maybe it will be, but uh, so far it's it's. It's out in the open. It's it's uh, concentrated strategically, but not bunched up tactically. And mm-hmm. it just doesn't it just doesn't make an easy target. Uh, now that's why I say a person should be safer if they're in New Hampshire, obviously from regular crime, but possibly also from targeting by the authorities. Because they have to ask themselves: Do we want to give this movement? And, you know, more attention and wind up with more liberty activists in New Hampshire and a more independent New Hampshire. Do we want that? That's what I want. I mean, yeah. That's, that's and the authorities don't. Here. So they would they would be in be- their best interest to be more cautious about the way they handle New Hampshireites who they are are against as opposed to Austinites who they are against. I mean, it seems it, to, to us who you and I have been here for a long, long time. You came in 2004 as an early mover for the Free State Project. Mm-hmm. I came up in 2006. So, I mean, we've been here for a while, and we can see how this movement has grown over the years. I mean, I remember when— And much of the growth was from attacks, right? When the authorities yeah. attack the movement, it gets bigger, so— It's true, and it's bigger now, and it's more effective now than it's ever been, and as more people come here, all of that will be amplified even more so. So, you know, if the authorities don't like it now, just wait until 10,000 people are here as part of the Free State Project. The Free State Project, for those who don't know, is the the idea of moving 20,000 liberty-loving people, having those people move here to New Hampshire and get active to achieve more liberty in our lifetime. They've got over 16,000 pledged to move. Over 1,700 are already here now, so over 1,500 yeah. of them have moved here. When you say the, the authorities don't like it, the authorities should like it. It's it's the kind of oh, thing don't. that helps generate more revenue for the country. You know, freedom does that. Hampshire? It gives them... Well, I mean, it, if a free, and in, a free and independent New Hampshire, or at least a freer New Hampshire inside the federal system is good for the feds because it generates more revenue. I mean, there's more revenue for them not to if, tax. Not if we more... start, no, not if we start a mass movement of not paying federal income tax. Well, sure. Tax. I mean, that that's something that would be nice. It's, it's important. But well, they're scared again, to death of uh, libertarians getting together. I mean, they don't. They want libertarians to to stay spread thin because they know that their system is based on lies and it's based on force. It's a, it's a coercive system. But there would be so many benefits for them. It's just like in the sense that the Saudi princes benefit from the presence of Qatar. I guess Qatar would be the freest state in the uh, uh, Middle East. They uh, don't or, see uh, that. Or maybe one of them. And, I don't know. I think you're, gonna, you're having a tough— t- Don't they want a place to go for prostitutes? Don't they want a place to go the, for gambling? The and feds, Don't they want a mean? place to go for— Yeah, they're just like everybody else in that respect. And it would be nice you if can we go to had, Atlantic City and gamble. That's closer to DC. True, but I mean, it'd be a good, it'd be it'd be nice for again. Like I said, I think the Saudis make great use of some of these freer countries in in the Middle East, uh, mm. and probably are recognizing that they're benefiting. You would think that the Feds, some of them, could come to the same conclusion that they would benefit from a freer New Hampshire. 
that they, I know they're I don't evil, so they won't. I, no, I, I recognize that, but they I, should. I don't know if they're evil. See the benefit. They're just wrong. They're doing the wrong thing, and they're going to look on the short term. And even if they are looking on the long term, I still think they'll be looking at it from the perspective of they will see that their power could be. They would lose their grip over New Hampshire if enough libertarians move to New Hampshire. We could declare secession. You know, even it would be that no problem. Though they don't realize it could benefit them. And secession. They, just, could they can't see them? any benefit that's right in front of their face. How could secession benefit them? I mean, then well, again, you know, then then you'd have a Qatar right in the middle of the of the uh, of the Atlant uh, the uh, north North Atlantic part of the United States. You know, there would be um, a place that everyone can go and do everything they want. And there are the many things, there are Kong. plenty of things feds want to do that are illegal. Just because they're feds sure. doesn't mean they don't want drugs. Doesn't mean they don't want prostitutes. That's sort of yeah, thing. but they get those things anyway. I mean, if you are, yeah, it seems like they mostly do, but yeah. they are taking a risk. You know, if, sure. if you're in uh, D.C. and you're playing with prostitutes and you've got any political enemy, they might be able to still turn the system against you. It's not at all unheard of. Yeah, you know, they could still come against you even if they knew. Like for instance, if they knew you were going to New Hampshire specifically to vacation and acquire some prostitutes and some crack, uh, you know, they could still turn that against you because maybe it politically but at least it yeah. wouldn't be illegal you wouldn't I be see. thrown in jail there's so many I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of feds who've been thrown in jail right i mean because other feds Not turn <laughs> other other feds turn on them yeah there's so many lying cop fed cops out there though so um you know regarding the idea of moving these these doers these movers the shakers the uh the cody wilson's the bernard von Nothauses of the world it's a tough sell to get somebody to pick up their entire life and especially if they own a business to get them to pick up their business. But really, I think one of the most important questions that needs to be asked of these folks is what would it take? Okay, look, I know you don't want to move right now to New Hampshire, but is there, you know, is there a certain criteria that could be met? Is it a number of people? Is it if we have 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 liberty-loving people who move here? Would that be it? Would it be the repeal of certain laws? I mean, obviously, we want the kind of person who's going to come here who wants liberty for liberty's sake and is willing to get down and start working and isn't waiting for something to happen. Those are really the doers that we want here. Whether they have a name or not is immaterial to me because if you've never done activism before, you can move to New Hampshire and have a, a virtual smorgasbord of, uh, of activism from which to choose – and you can find out what you like, find out what you don't like. And if you are somebody who wants to you know, get elected or make some sort of political name for yourself, New Hampshire is the place to do it because everything that happens here is so intimate compared to politics everywhere else. Like it's easy comparatively to get elected in New Hampshire. I think the average state rep spends $500 on a successful campaign for state rep. You compare that to any other state rep campaign anywhere else. And, uh, and by the way, $500 would be five times what you'll actually get paid per year uh, as a state rep because state reps get paid $100 per year for their, for their service. So it's, it's a really fascinating place. If you want to learn more about it, I would recommend that you check out the 101 Reasons film. It's a great movie that you can watch on YouTube. Just search for 101 Reasons film and uh, it should come right up. And it's 101 Reasons Why New Hampshire is the Best Destination for People Who Love Liberty. But I guess it's just not clear enough, Dave. Because well, again, if someone is going to go as far out on a limb as Bernard von Nothaus did, getting mm -hmm. himself you know, raided by the, the feds, getting Risking himself, life in prison. Uh, yeah, he uh, ended up, I think, not getting a super difficult sentence. But, Correct, he's uh, on know, probation. It could have been really life-ending for him. That's right. And um, he knew he was taking a risk at the beginning. So uh, if you're going to do that... Why not go ahead and and sh I don't know uh, shore up your you know I don't know if shore up your defenses is the right word but just go somewhere you, where you know it, it will okay if I get arrested here it's gonna count it's gonna be in a lot there's gonna be a lot of media coverage of this if right. I get arrested while I'm out here isolated maybe not so many people will pay attention yeah where's the but, video of the raid on the Liberty Dollar offices it doesn't exist yeah if if that office had been on Main Street in Keene New Hampshire. Bernard von Nothaus could have placed a phone call to uh, Pork 411, the messaging service that we have here, left a voicemail, and then you know said, hey, uh, we're getting raided, here's the location, here's what's happening, and then hang up the phone. That message then goes out to hundreds of recipients who could, some of them can respond. And it's and, also... And they would, it, likely. It, people have this mentality that they're going to take their lever and move a mountain with it. But you can only move boulders with levers, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to get a boulder before you... Maybe you can... With the boulder, you can have enough, you know, leverage to start making something happen with the mountain. But you just people just think they can 
they think they can go after the beast itself directly, and it really doesn't work that way. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts. Also, there's more to say about the 3D gun restrictions that are coming into play, apparently, at the federal level. It's Free Talk Live. Hour 2 next. It is the year 91,001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius, a classic role-playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other game before. A liberty-oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hypercronius today. Use the code FTL to get $1 off. Hypercronius. ZOG.ninja. Code FTL. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. FreeTalkLive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, June 17th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.98 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $256. Antiwar.com reports in a 78-21 to vote, the U.S. Senate yesterday added an amendment to the upcoming military funding bill formally banning any U.S. government agency from engaging in torture and requiring them to provide Red Cross access to any detainee, no matter how secretive. Despite a wide margin of victory, the bill was opposed by a large number of the Senate's leaders, including Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and assorted other hawks. Senator Marco Rubio, the lone senator not present, says he would have voted against it as well on the grounds that the U.S. should not tell the enemy whether or not they're going to get tortured beforehand. The amendment, assuming it survives the eventual reconciliation with the House version of the National Defense Authorization Act, will effectively require all government agencies to comply with the Army's public manual on the treatment of detainees and abide by the Geneva Convention against torture. While rights groups are generally supportive of the passage, Human Rights Watch Council Laura Pitter noted that the CIA has been carrying out torture in ways that were formerly against the law in the first place and caution that a future administration would likely just ignore the rule if they were in a torture kind of mood. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports a New York State Appeals Court heard arguments on Tuesday over unsailing minutes of a grand jury that declined to indict a New York police officer in the chokehold death of an unarmed man. A coalition of groups seeking release of the transcripts told the four-judge panel that grand jury secrecy undermined confidence in the justice system and hampered debate among state lawmakers weighing grand jury reforms. The groups, which include the Legal Aid Society, want the appeals court to overturn a Staten Island justice's decision in March to bar release of records of the grand jury that probed the death of Eric Garner last year. New York Civil Liberties attorney Art Einsberg told the justices of the Supreme Court Appellate Division 2nd Department, the secrecy only reinforces suspicion and there is deep suspicion here in the comments of color and among other things. Garner, a father of six, died when a New York police officer, Daniel Pantaleo, held him in a chokehold during his arrest in July on suspicion he was selling loose cigarettes. The incident, caught on video, was among the cases that sparked a nationwide protest over police treatment of minorities. Garner's last words, I can't breathe, have become a rallying cry for protesters, but Assistant District Attorney for Staten Island, Ann Grady, contended that breaching the practice of keeping grand jury records secret would not restore public confidence. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports billionaire Donald Trump has announced that he will run for the Republican nomination for the 2016 presidential campaign on Tuesday. Trump said, announcing his campaign, Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for president of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. Trump, worth about $9 billion, spoke at an 11 a.m. rally at Trump Tower in New York City. He added, Our country is in serious trouble. We don't have victories anymore. When was the last time anybody saw us beating, let's say, China in a trade deal? They kill us. I beat China all the time. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They laugh at us, at our stupidity. He said that Mexico is killing us economically. Trump, famous for his wealth, real estate finesse, and The Apprentice reality TV show, had previously toyed with the idea of the presidency before. He talked about running in the presidential elections in 2008 and again in 2012, but never formally announced. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A Rasmussen poll reveals that nearly all American voters share a deep fear of botching another election, with most voters admitting that selecting candidates for public office is something they're historically just not particularly good at. I really hope I don't completely f*** things up as usual, but you never know, things do happen. According to the poll, three-quarters of voters said Election Day panic would cause them to base their vote entirely on hearsay, while 93% acknowledged that they only recognized names of local candidates from signs along state highways. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, stunned friends and acquaintances expressed shock and disbelief when a body found in the woods turned out not to be Justin. Local residents found the naked corpse draped over a tree stump Saturday, and as news spread, many found themselves struggling to comprehend how it wasn't Justin lying dead in the forest. I heard the news, and I still can't come around to it. I just can't imagine that it's not Justin there lying dead in the woods. Are they absolutely sure it's not him? Friends and family are still urging authorities to double-check the body, or at the very least, bring in Justin as a suspect. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here. Maybe. 855-450-FREE. Uh, that number may not be working very, very well, however. So I'm going to give you a different number, 603-435-1105. That's sort of the back lines here into the LRN.FM studio, 603-435-1105. That'll get you on here. And, of course, you can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is LRN.FM. You do need to send a contact request first if you've never done that before. Just send that. We'll approve it when we see it come in. And after that... You can call anytime you want on Skype, and you'll sound usually really, really great compared to somebody on the phones. Uh, joining you in studio, you've got Ian here. And Ridley. And don't forget, you can join us online anytime at freetalklive.com, where the online world has just gotten a little bit less free, and some would argue a lot less free, with the recent decision by the State Department 
to basically prohibit distribution of 3D printable gun plans. Uh, for those of you who are new to uh, 3D printing, this is technology that now can be in your home for a relatively affordable price. 3D printers are getting cheaper all the time, and it's pretty much consumer avail uh, con consumer level availability at this point for 3D printers. So you can have one of these things uh, relatively affordably, and there are plans that you can download for guns, like the Liberator, which is kind of a one-shot, maybe more than one-shot, uh, kind of firearm that you can build with these plans. You print out pla hard plastic, and then with a screw, you put it all together. And it ostensibly, I've you know, I've seen video of this happen. Will shoot at least one round, and <clears throat> in the general direction that you're pointing it. So it qualifies uh, as a gun. And so, therefore, the federal government is saying that now, if you the uh, defense distributed, this is the company that's put out the Liberator. If you are going to, you first of all, you have to take this down from the website. They told them that two years ago, which they did. And now they're saying any further guns that you manufacture, or any further plans for guns that you manufacture, you need to approve them through us before being able to distribute them online. And, of course, the answer is going to be no. You cannot distribute that online because essentially what the federal government is saying here is that distributing plans for 3D printable guns is some sort of violation of a trade act. Uh, this is the IA, or excuse me, the ITAR, the International Trade in Arms Restrictions. Well, whatever it is, regulations. Same thing. International Trade in Arms regulations. And Defense Distributed has now countersued, arguing that their right to free speech is being violated by the State Department's restrictions. Further, they're not just targeting Defense Distributed; they're also saying that anyone in the United States who is going to put out plans for 3D printable guns will need to go through the State Department for some sort of approval beforehand. So this is terrible. Which they won't get. Yeah, yeah. it's just like the federal government. It's like that, that commercial for some credit card about six years ago where, you know, the, the the guy's training one of the one of the credit card employees how to handle customer service calls and the training consists of the word no you know so everything <laughs> the customer asks you're supposed to say no. say no 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 can i change my rate no can i you know have it sent to my no and so you know, that you know that's our competition so do business with us that was the but there's no competition for the frigging State Department. They've no. got a monopoly. And didn't we learn in college or high school or somewhere that, that monopolies, monopolies were bad. defeated back in the 1870s because Standard Oil was broken up? You know, and uh, uh, but, but but since then, not the worst monopoly. The, the other worst actual monopoly's always been there. important monopolies have not been broken up. Uh, so as for the letter, this is from Wire.com. As for the letter to Defense Distributed, the State Department spokesperson confirmed that it was intended to counter the publication of 3D printed gun blueprints. Spokesperson was unpersuaded by Defense Distributed's first uh, free speech argument, saying, quote, For us, it's not about free speech. This is about securing defense technology. If two U.S. citizens want to email each other CAD files, that's not our concern. But they need to follow the international trade in arms regulations. Well, that's, I'm sure, very easy to do. Following the, oh, you yes, only have to course. hire a lobbyist, uh, uh, a, a lawyer, a uh, second lawyer to get you a second opinion on the first lawyer. You, you, know, you have to contact the government, wait 18 months. You know, just, <laughs> ah, no, 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 don't do this. Don't do that. Do nothing. Sit still. Produce nothing. Be like us. I would love to know how many pages the ITAR is, this international. National Traffic in Arms Regulations. Let's go to Chris. He's calling from Connecticut. Hopefully the phone system will work here. Chris, uh, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Good evening, Ian and Dave. Dave, it's, it's good to be on the phone with you. It's a long, uh, first time, long time. Welcome. Anyway, you sound thanks, good. Go ahead. Cool. Topic at hand, this obviously is a very dangerous precedent from the uh, federal Nazis. I mean, it sounds like you could be on a gun blog talking about your trigger like the the pole, the pounds, and talking some details and be at risk for getting the federal goons dropping helicopter or pill lines into your house. Well, it's certainly true but, that uh, they will likely interpret this on a wider scale or a wider vision than they currently are speaking about it. Uh, but as of right now, they are telling people that if you are putting out technical data, so-called, about guns, that you need to ask for mommy's permission from the federal government. Yeah, it sounds big enough to arrest you for anything, but this... Mm -hmm parallel something that I recall reading about with RSA encryption. A long time ago, the uh, feds tried to block the 
publishing of source code for encryption because they hate it so much because you can actually uh, communicate in secret. Right. So from, from what I recall, recall reading, maybe like 10, 20 years ago, a bunch of activists ultimately uh, committed civil disobedience on like the Capitol lawn, and I believe they like read the source code aloud until it kind of just got into the public ledger. Hmm. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this. You guys ever heard of this? No. It's interesting. Sounds good. Yeah, I like it. Hold on. That's about to say. Awesome. So I'm going to let you guys Chris, go. Chris, thanks uh, for the call, day. brother. Thanks I appreciate it. You sounded good tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, toll-free number. That that was the toll-free number, by the way. 855-450-FREE. So I guess it's working, but I'll keep giving out the other number just in case. 603-435-1105 is the alternative if you want to join the discussion here. So back to the story from Wired. Then coming up, Dave Ridley will be talking about ambush interviews, specifically the one that I attempted to do with uh, Bernie Sanders a couple of weeks back. Uh, according to the story here, defense distributed's attorney Matthew Goldstein argues the State Department's moves only bolster his client's free speech case. He says, quote, it means there's no doubt as to the scope of their prior restraint against this company. Goldstein using the legal term prior restraint to mean a legal restriction against speech before it's published, which has long been considered unconstitutional. It is a tremendous help to the case, says defense distributed's attorney. Other lawyers have taken a different view of that free speech claim, arguing that it may not so clearly apply when the information in question is an actual weapon file, ready to be 3D printed into a lethal firearm. Quote, the State Department's takedown demand probably qualifies as prior restraint, to which the courts are incredibly hostile, says intellectual property lawyer Ansel Halliburton in an op-ed for TechCrunch after the State Department's original letter demanded Defense Distributed remove its gun files from the Internet. Quote, but the ability to download a file, press print, and have gun parts come out could also tip some judges toward calling gun CAD files functional things and allowing the government to regulate them. So it's definitely going to be a question mark when it comes to the courts and how they'll decide on this. There have been restrictions placed on so-called free speech in the past. As long oh, as yeah. the government has a so-called compelling interest, they can give themselves an excuse uh, based on supposed necessity. These are terms that you'll frequently hear the government use to excuse violations of rights. Uh, that you know, this isn't an open and shut case. I guess is what I'm trying to say here. And hopefully, let's ask the government if the government should be able to regulate something. Yeah, that usually doesn't go too well. You know, every now and then the court gets it right, and maybe they'll get it right in this case. But again, they've just filed the case as of a month ago. It's going to be a while before this you know, snakes its way even through the first court. The new State Department restrictions, according to Wire.com's Andy Greenberg, come as Congress also begins to re-examine potential regulations on 3D printed weapons. New York Representative Steve Israel Tuesday reintroduced a bill to ban any firearm whose core components are undetectable in a metal detector, which would effectively outlaw many 3D printed guns. So therefore, hobbyists, tinkerers, people who love 3D printing, who also like firearms, who want to manufacture their own gun and keep it at their home, will be manufacturing and possessing contraband uh, if this bill goes through, of course, in the New solution York. to that is easy. Don't tell anyone you no, have it. No, move to New Hampshire oh, where well, it's legal. Helps. Yeah, so where guns are the third rail. You don't touch them. The government can't. Almost. Even the Democrats, a lot of them have guns in New Hampshire. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. That's our toll free number. Also, another number six zero three four three five eleven zero five. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Honey, it's time for dinner. 
What are you doing over there on your computer? I'm shopping for a new wallet. Mine is falling apart. Hey, did you know there's a company called ID Stronghold that makes shielded wallets to prevent electronic pickpocketing? Oh, I didn't realize there was such a thing as electronic pickpocketing. What is that? Well, apparently, many of the new credit and debit cards being issued have radio chips inside them called RFID that transmit our banking information to card readers when we pay. Unfortunately, a bad guy can also get one of these readers and go around the city scanning people, collecting their credit card numbers and personal information without us knowing it. Wow, that sounds scary. Since you're getting a new wallet anyway, you should definitely get an ID Stronghold shielded wallet. Are they more expensive? No. In fact, I can get a shielded leather wallet from IDStronghold.com for the same price or less than regular unshielded wallets from other stores. Sounds great. My wallet isn't falling apart yet, but let me pick one out too. I want to be protected, and these wallets at IDStronghold.com look fantastic. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Joining you tonight in the studio, you've got me, Ian. Ridley. Dave Ridley's here from RidleyReport.com. And ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, they're all available through ExpressCoin. Go to ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you get cryptocurrencies with money order or check. And it's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. Plus, they're a licensed money services business. You can do it from your smartphone. They've got an app. Just download that at ExpressCoin.com or just do it straight through their website. Use coupon code FTL and you'll get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin or whatever other currency. Uh, cryptocurrency there with no transfer fee at all. So use code FTL, like Free Talk Live, over at ExpressCoin.com. Get your cryptocurrencies. And by the way, Bitcoin's gone up a little bit over the last 48 hours. It was uh, around 230 for a while, and now it's at two, the 250 uh, range. So will it go up more? Will it go back down? I have no idea. But if you're interested, ExpressCoin.com can hook you up. Let's go to your calls and thoughts the 3D gun restrictions are in place now at the federal government level. There's a lawsuit that is challenging it, uh, challenging it at the uh, the State Department and their their regulations, which are controlling Defense Distributed now. Basically, telling the folks over at Defense Distributed, if you want to release 3D gun plans, you got to go through us, which of course means they won't be able to release any 3D gun plans. 
And further, you also, if you at home are the one or somebody who is uh, planning on releasing some 3D gun plans, the federal government says that if you do that without their permission, that they could possibly do something nasty to you because they'll say you're violating the International Trade in Arms Regulation Act, which so-called restricts technical data from being distributed outside of the United States about weapons. Uh, and that means they're likely going to take violations fairly seriously, so be very, very careful. And if you are going to release any kind of plans for guns at this point, for 3D printable guns, do not do it from your own personal accounts. Use as much anonym uh, anonymity software as you possibly can. ProXPN, Tor, maybe get in touch with WikiLeaks or some other outside of the U.S. organization that can do the releasing for you. Uh, because right now it is not a very friendly place in the U.S. for freedom of speech and that's why Cody Wilson is filing a lawsuit. We will let you know as that develops how it goes down. Let's go in the meantime to Ken in Minnesota, listening to WNMT in the northern part of the state. Hey, Ken. Yes, I got a couple of questions. Uh, we're, we're coming out there in July 3rd. We're going to be there for over a week, and we're looking for property to buy. Right on. Uh, Yay. A couple of questions I have is, is there an admissions or a vehicle inspection because I only drive older vehicles that are no computers or nothing on them. Yeah, so you're asking about New Hampshire, and uh, there is an inspection requirement if a vehicle is registered in New Hampshire. Now, one of the ways around that is to uh, have the vehicle registered under a corporation in another state. So that's one way to you know not have a vehicle in your name, number one. So therefore, if you know, you get a judgment against you or something that can't actually take your car because it's owned by a corporation. And secondly, if it's registered in another state and owned by a corporation, then as I understand it, the state of New Hampshire cannot force it to be registered within the state. So there are ways around it, but it takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of money. Uh, otherwise, you know, yes, the answer would be yes if you're talking about a personal vehicle. Okay. So is there a personal property tax? Um, that I guess that that term has different definitions. So in some places, property tax can mean like the stuff that you own. But here in New Hampshire, You're there's on, there's a property oh, tax on land. Right, but not not on your automobile or a boat or anything like that. There is uh, for automobiles and boats. There's registration fees for those kind of things. They're uh, negligible if you have an old vehicle like that. Probably that's true. The fee is less for an older vehicle than it is for a newer vehicle. But then again, you know, like I said, if you want to avoid uh, inspections and things like that, then you probably want to do a, a corporate registration in a different state. Or well, I wonder if what you've already got is working for you and if you could just keep it registered in Minnesota. You probably could. That's the easiest way to do things. As long as you're not going to be like an activist on the forefront. I mean, if they know who you are, if you're moving here for the Free State Project, the you know movement of libertarians converging in New Hampshire, and if you're like one of the behind the scenes activists who isn't out on Front Street with a visible name and face, then I would say you're fairly safe. I had a car here in New Hampshire, uh, I had more, more than one car. I had over six years had cars that were registered in Florida under my own personal name, which was in violation of the New Hampshire statutes. And they finally went after me for that. It took them six or seven years to uh, to go after me for that. But they did, and they got me, and, uh, and they got me pretty good. They basically forced me at the threat of violence to... Uh, to get their New Hampshire driver's license and to, um, you know, they can't force me to register a car in New Hampshire because I don't own a car. Um, there are corporations who own cars that I drive, um, so therefore those things don't need to be registered in New Hampshire. But yeah, basically that Dave Ridley's suggestion is the easiest, the most low-impact one. The way you would want to do that is to contact uh, Minnesota, their DMV or whoever, and and let them know hey, please send this registration renewal to me in New Hampshire. I'm going to be working in New Hampshire at that time of year, and so I need you to send that to me there. And then they'll just update your address and just send you future registration stuff. But then you just have to be careful. If you get pulled over by a cop and the cop asks you something like, do you live here in New Hampshire, you want to make sure you know better than to talk to the cops in that Am case. I required to answer your questions? Right. So I got and, one other question for you, Roman. Is, is New Hampshire an open carry state? It sure is, uh, unless you're a felon. So if you are a felon, then you cannot open carry, but pretty much everyone else is. I understand it. And by the way, none of this is legal advice. It's just my understanding from having lived here yeah. for almost a decade. Um, yeah, felons cannot carry guns openly or concealed, but anybody can carry a gun openly who is not a felon. 
Not well, only that, I, but uh, you can actually do it without getting in trouble. I mean, you generally won't get bothered by a cop for open carrying in New Hampshire. I can't even name the last open carry incident. What was it, 2011, 2010? I don't know. It's been a while. It was probably Manchester where that happened. I don't... I mean, again, that's in my knowledge. Now, yeah. there's things I don't know about, but... Yeah, it, New Hampshire's an incredibly gun-friendly state, and uh, and there's it's very difficult for the gun controllers to actually get any, any headway here uh, whatsoever. Usually, the proposed bills to control guns in New, New Hampshire end up going down in flames. There is a requirement for concealed carry license in New Hampshire. So if you're going to uh, conceal carry, they do want you to have the state permission slip for that. And there is a bill that is right now being voted on that could possibly repeal that requirement. But I believe the governor has pledged that she's going to veto that. So I don't expect that that one's going to get turned over this year. But as we move more liberty-loving people here, we're going to be more and more likely, I think, to have success at having more gun freedom uh, in New Hampshire. It's one of the most gun-free, er, gun-free as in gun freedom <laughs> oriented, uh, areas of the country, but it's not quite up to the level of Vermont and Alaska. It's like, a, what, number three or four or something like that? Does that answer your questions, Ken? Yes, sir. And thank you very much. And enjoy your program very much. Thanks for the call. Look forward to uh, having you visit out here. It's a great place, and I've loved living here for the last almost decade. Thanks for the call tonight. Of course, Ken talking about uh, the Free State Project, the idea we touched on earlier of liberty-loving people moving to New Hampshire and getting active. Now, being active doesn't mean the same thing to everybody, right? Like for you, Dave Ridley, it means making a lot of video content and uh, possibly doing the occasional uh, street protest uh, for me, it means a variety of different things, but for some people, it may not mean so. Out, you know, being out front. Some people, you know, programming a website could be considered activism if the website is sort of an activist site. Uh, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes things like support roles that people can perform. You know, cooking for other activists, I think, could be considered activism. Anything you're doing to support the people that are out on the front lines is also activism. Uh, 855 free is our toll-free number. Also, 603-435-1105 is an alternate for you tonight. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. By now, you know that wireless technology like cell phones do, in fact, pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality, American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213 213- 
493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. A local grandmother is beginning to realize that her family never even looked for a better nursing home. A man leaves a father-daughter dance with a different girl than he came with, and an earthquake late warning system goes off in Haiti. Watch as yet another precious fraction of your life passes mercilessly in front of your very eyes. This is The Onion Week in Review. Shortly after discovering he had locked himself outside of his suburban home Thursday, fully nude claims adjuster David Ronzo delivered a moving and thought-provoking treatise on the frailty of the human condition to a slowly gathering crowd of his neighbors. Ronzo, who initially panicked when he realized he was naked, soon turned and faced confused passersby and delivered a stirring oration on the grim facts of mortality along with the indomitable nature of the human spirit. In other news, a man is arrested for stealing over $50,000 worth of beards from Hank Williams Jr. A pretty lady is playing hard to follow, and a dog named Murph lives up to his name. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. We'll, of course, take your calls about anything that you want to discuss. You may join us. And by the way, the toll-free lines seem to have been working fine. I was given a warning earlier tonight that uh, there may be some real bad phone lines tonight. But everything's been good so far, so I'll give you the toll-free number. It's 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, you've got me, Ian. Really? And don't forget, you can join us online. There are a lot of features on our website. We give them away. Those other talk show hosts in the business, they want to charge you for their sites. So go and enjoy free archives and much more over at freetalklive.com. Freetalklive.com. Now, something, yeah, it's a great site, and hopefully we're going to have a newer uh, redesign for you sometime this summer. I can't guarantee you when, but uh, we'll tell you more when that when that actually happens. Uh, FortGalt.com is where you want to go if you want to look at some options of what to do to get out of the United States. There are a number of options around the world, and this one is a really interesting one. It, it's uh, it's being developed. It's a real estate development, so it's in the planning stages right now. It does not physically exist, but it will at some point. Uh, and they what what they want you to do is to get involved. They want you to uh, you know pony up a little bit of cash to reserve your spot in what will ultimately ultimately be kind of like a I don't know if you want to call it like an incubator, but basically you'll be able to go down. You'll have a room, a very small room that you can sort of just sleep in basically, and then there are larger areas in which you can uh, get your work done and interact with others. It's uh, going to be a fresh, vibrant center of art, innovation, education and creative capitalism. Imagine being a strong, ambitious producer without being surrounded by those that would demonize you for your efforts and success. It's the ideal home base for young professionals, freelancers, small business owners, and their families. Uh, the only true requirement is that you are self-sufficient and flexible enough to relocate without depending on others to provide for you. So you can go there and learn and grow while honing your skills, developing your crafts, and thriving without constraint. Live passionately with the freedom to focus on your true callings without compromise. If it sounds like the community you've dreamed of, go to fortgalt.com right now. You don't have to put down all of the money up front. There are going to be different stages of this development where they'll ask for uh, for payments. You know, As you see them developing this, as you see progress, you will also be asked to uh, to pony up some more of the, uh, the the money you can get into this for as little as ten thousand bucks though and uh, that's not up front that's you know a fraction of that goes in up front the total amount for one of these smaller rooms is uh, is very very low on the on the scale of things so go to fort, fortgalt.com and learn more it's happening in Chile by the way is, uh, is the destination fort galt f o r t g a l t dot com so our toll-free number, again, is 855-450-FREE. Let's talk to Tom in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tom. Yeah, I want to make a point by first talking about something else and telling how it relates to my point, okay? And that is, let's say you get a job driving a delivery truck, and your first day, your boss goes out with you, and you're driving, 
and your boss says, look, you've got to make the schedule. You're going to have to drive faster than this. You can't obey the speed limit, or, or you're going to lose your job. And then when you come up behind somebody, your boss tells you to pass that person, even though you can't really see because you're on a hill. You can't see if somebody else is coming. Uh, it's your fault if you obey your boss and keep your jo- in order to keep your job if you drive too fast. And the fact that you could not see so it, if there was oncoming traffic means that uh, it means n- doesn't mean that it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. Of course, if you cannot see that it is safe to pass, then you must refrain from passing. What this has to do is something else. Sometimes I, I bring up points this way, and the something else is those goons that threw the flash grenade into a toddler's playpen in Cornelia, Georgia, on 28 May 2014. They were doing their job. They get fired if they don't do it. So what? They still ha- must refrain from violating somebody's rights, and they couldn't see that there was a toddler in a playpen over there, but they had no reason to think there wouldn't be, just like when you, if you're on a hill and you cannot pass somebody because you can't see if there's oncoming traffic. Or you drop a bomb so, on Dresden because you're not sure that it's going to land on a civilian. It might hit a soldier. Yeah, you know, in, well, in World War II, uh, I'm referring to the firebombing of Dresden by the Allies. And, and by the way, I want to bring up, uh, now that I made that point, I want to bring up something else that about uh, the Canadians who are being uh, pursued by the U.S. government because they were born in the United States or born to U.S. citizen parents, and they're supposedly U.S. citizens, and therefore uh, the federal government wants to make them pay income taxes and uh penalties for failing to report all their bank accounts all these years mm. and they they raised the fee to 2350 US dollars to renounce your US citizenship but I brought up to a Canadian organization the fact that on 19 October of this year they're having Canadian federal elections and if you accept employment with the Canadian government such as a poll worker then you if you're a Canadian dual citizen and you accept employment as a poll worker. That is being employed by the Canadian government, and you thereby relinquish your Canadian, your United States citizenship by getting employed in the employment of a foreign country's government. Well, wait a and minute. So if you're working they, for the Canadian government, you're saying you're relinquishing automatically? Does that mean you avoid the thousands dollar fee for re- renouncing citizenship? That's correct. That, that's interesting. It, uh, that's yeah. That's. But who uh, files the paperwork? I mean, how do, does does Canada file paperwork, or do you file paperwork in that case? Uh, you can file paperwork if you want to get a certificate of loss of nationality and thereby call attention to the fact that you've been a U- may have been a U.S. citizen all these years, mm-hmm. or you simply uh, t- take the job. You work there for one day on election day. I, I can't resist. Uh, saying that you get the ballot and the ballot boxes out of the poll vault, get it, poll vault, uh, but then uh, then uh, you after that's done, you have been employed by the Canadian government. Now, and does the government of Canada pay citizens. poll workers? Because I know that it seems like a volunteer job here in the United States. There's all these, you know, retiree-looking folks who are who are there. I, I suspect well, they're not getting stealing paid. your flyers. <laughs> yeah, there's that. That's another story. I got paid one one, one time. I did it one time uh, for the uh, 1992 uh, presidential primary. I, I was a poll worker because I got elected selectman with a single write-in vote because there was a vacancy on the ballot. And so I wound up working at the polls on and they paid uh, you. presidential primary day. Yeah, they paid me. Tom, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, we we need to do like nhindependence.org is suggesting and make it so that New Hampshire is a foreign country and you can do all – you don't have to go to Canada to do all that Mm. stuff to uh, not be part of the federal system anymore. You know, the folks over at – you mentioned nhindependence.org. They are – they're they're back at it. I was glad to see that they had an event last month or not even last month, maybe just a couple weeks ago. They had an event, and it was more of like a social kind of event. That's how revolutions start, in bars. Yeah, well, they called it uh, Brew and Sedition, I believe. Did you happen to attend it? Was it was in Merrimack. I didn't go. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to go myself. I had to, I think, actually, we were both on the show on that uh, that particular night. But it. I heard, I talked to uh, Rob Mathias from Rebel Love Show, who's one of the board members now, I believe, of the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, and he said there were... A few dozen people there, so I think like Good. 30-something uh, people had attended that, which... 
I thought that was really good. Like I, I wouldn't have expected that. It's like anything else. When you've got a good idea, you don't really have to have the perfect protest or the perfect event. It's just mm. doing anything attached to that good idea is good. It's like like the like with the Free State movement. You know, almost anything, any almost any activity in New Hampshire is good just because it's in New Hampshire. Well, but there are some they've people taken who will it, disagree with they, that. They've taken it a step further and made made it so that. Uh, they're doing something in New Hampshire that's it's like it's hitting on, on on more cylinders than activism that doesn't deal with secession because secession is the is the solution to most of our problems. It's like it's the, a big it's one. It's the root sure. striking move. But it's and also something some people are afraid of. So, Dave, some people would disagree with you. They would say that you've got to be careful. You can't be talking about secession. It's too early. For okay, that. so be careful. So move it's towards secession. Carefully, don't talk, but don't talk about, don't constantly. Use that word. <laughs> don't use that word. Don't talk about secession. It's too early. We need to have more success Maybe first. independence has more positives in people's minds as toll, a word. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Speaking of activism, you had something you wanted to say about a recent video that I produced at a Bernie Sanders campaign event here as sort of an ambush interview. It's actually also secession-related. <laughs> All right, we'll get into that here. Coming up. With Dave Ridley and Ian here in the studio on Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. It is the year 91001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius, a classic role-playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other game before. The liberty-oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hypercronius today. Use the code FTL to get $1 off. Hypercronius. zog.ninja. Code FTL. The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's not addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Uses directed. We've all heard the news stories, another shooting, and they're getting worse. That's why Infidel Body Armor introduces Infidel Fridays, exclusive 24-hour insider deals to save you money and possibly save your life. Make it a favorite when you log on to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Then be sure to visit each and every Infidel Friday to get special insider pricing, but for 24 hours only. That's InfidelBodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Want to listen to your favorite GCN hosts and programs without a radio signal or internet? Just call 605-562-4213. Get instant access to all GCN live feeds right on your phone. Anywhere you want, anytime you want. 605-562-4213. It's our way of ensuring everyone has the opportunity to enjoy GCN. 605-562-4213. The future of talk radio. GCN. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here on the radio waves and the internet tubes and the satellite waves here. 855-450 free is our toll-free number. The hour includes me, Ian, tonight. Good day. And Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com. That's where you can go to get, I don't know how many hundreds of hours of Liberty, but I imagine you've hit the hundreds mark at this point. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Dave Ridley on RidleyReport.com. Thousands of videos. I know that much. Thousands of them. There's a lot to watch there. A lot of history has been uh, cataloged. A lot of the history of the activism that has happened here in New Hampshire as uh, part of, much of it as part of the Free State Project's early movers coming here and doing so many interesting things. And of course, Dave, you can only be in one place at one time, unfortunately. I wish there were a dozen uh, Dave Ridleys out there in New Hampshire, but uh, you have spread the methods of the Ridleyos. You had, uh, for a while, offered a training course. I don't know if you still offer that course. You were one of my students. I was, and uh, hopefully I learned something. I feel yeah. like I did. You, you hit on most cylinders. You hit on more cylinders by far than than most of the New Hampshire activists. Well, I also get out there and, and do it a lot, too, so it helps you know to, to practice at it. You're not going to be good the first day out. you got to really get out there. And so I know, Dave, you wanted to talk about uh, one of the recent videos that I made, there was a Bernie Sanders event here in Keene. And it was really the first real opportunity the Keeneacs, uh, activists in the area here in New Hampshire, southwest corner of New Hampshire, had had to target one of these presidential candidates. Hillary Clinton did come to town in April, but unfortunately she chose April 20th as her day to come to town. And so pretty much everybody who was doing activism was in Concord on that particular day. And I don't think anybody went and con uh, confronted Hillary. Oh, and I guess that Chris Christie guy from New Jersey, he showed up here, but it was at a private it was on private property, so we really couldn't do anything on that one. But in the case of Bernie Sanders, he was at the Rec Center, which is a government plot of land and uh, was going to be speaking, spoke for mo more than an hour and took uh, a lot of questions. And now I would like to address the issue of yeah, I, I bet that was really riveting. Actually, uh, Chris Cantwell said he was an excellent speaker and he uh, was like really engaging and and was good in his uh, his method nah, of communication. What they say doesn't even matter. Well, I'm not saying that Chris is ag was agreeing with the content of uh, of what he was saying, but he was just talking about in the the manner in which he was speaking that he was he was able to manipulate the emotions of the crowd and was very very good. Like it was clear how he got to where he is because he's good at being a politician. Um, that's yeah, that's one of the few compliments you can give Bernie Sanders, right? Like the other one is that he's at least more genuine and honest about wanting socialism. You know, many uh, many people will not wear that on their sleeve, but Bernie Sanders is the kind of guy who absolutely will do that. So you got to give somebody credit where credit's due, and I'll certainly give him that credit. So I and other activists went out there, including Chris Cantwell, D uh, Daryl Perry, and and Derek J. Uh, many of our uh, Free Talk Live co-hosts were actually there participating in this. We wanted to uh, corner him and throw some questions at him. So what were your thoughts on the on the video? It was over at freekeen.com if you haven't seen it yet. Well, ambush interviews are starting to reach the point where they're they're not so experimental anymore, right? They they're they're being done more often. I've been urging people for so many years to go out and do them and hardly anyone will do them and God bless you for doing it, you know. Oh, thanks. You're getting right. out there doing ambush interviews. Here comes the critique. That's the big start. <laughs> <laughs> the most important step. But uh, I've noticed some things. I really just actually have more. Uh, yeah, there are some critiques, but yeah. partly as I'm learning some things from watching you. Oh, good. And that is learn the, from my mistakes. And, and, and also once I was at an ambush interview fest with you and Daryl at the same time once, mm -hmm. which was also a learning experience. But what I learned from that is that is actually there are some things where you having more people is good and some things where you want to be by yourself. And, sure. and when you're ambush interviewing somebody, 
you're I think you, Ian Freeman, will be better off by yourself than you will if mm. like me or if I and Daryl am there also trying to dump in our questions. Yeah. We start to become like a mob, you know, and we start to seem like it. And the the, the worst behavior of the worst of the three of us, the mm. one that actually gets slightly angry rubs off on all the others yeah. you can't get the questions in that you want because your buddies are trying to ask questions it's better to go to a place where no one else is asking questions and i guess if um, that's if your questions are the most important part of the, about the interview but for me and, and i can totally see where you're coming from with that for me i didn't really have any good questions for bernie because yeah, like, you just heard about it at the last minute well no, no no it wasn't the last minute i knew it was happening but I didn't really do any planning for it. It was just oh. like, oh, this is happening this weekend. I got up early enough to go out to it, and I just sort of thought up a question when I was there. And then I thought up a better question on on his way out. That was when I asked him about Edward Snowden, which apparently he's actually talked about previously. And again, I did no research. I put zero time and effort besides going there and doing okay, it. Okay, well, yeah. Well, it. here's the critique. Uh, basically, what I've I've learned the hard way from doing ambush interviews, you, you are uh, better off asking them about something they've done than something they've said and you're better off asking Uh, them about something they've said than some policy question does that make sense that makes sense that's the that's the hierarchy that's the best thing you can do is find some cruel thing that they've done and confront them about that's what's the best like you voted this way on this thing why'd you do that or that kind of basically uh or or if they if they said something that's not quite as egregious but it also but it might provide some insight into into their crazy their level of crazy violence (laughs) <laughs> and, and then you can you can question them about that um but it seems like it seemed like the questions you guys are asking were a little bit they were i mean you guys did pretty good for being new at it but that the uh the questions were a little bit too policy oriented which is really mm. pretty vanilla uh and um you know how do you feel about secession well i mean i've asked that question too you know but it's just sort of like it's just uh, uh you got secession in front of Bernie Sanders, that's in, and thus in front of the audience, and, and that's good. But it's just like there just needs to be something. What would you have asked him? I mean, if you were there, and there's a good chance he'll be coming back. So if you, <clears> you got to make it a chance, yeah, yeah. If you were there, and if you, uh, you know, what what would you? What would Ridley's question be for? It Bernie actually might have been closer to Chris Cantwell's question, which I don't remember exactly. But he, was he, no, he was asking him. Well, he may have asked him about that, but he also asked him something specific about. I mean, it was, it was getting close to asking him something specific about cruel ideas of his. You know what I'm saying? And I don't remember mm-hmm. precisely what it was, but it was something about private property. Uh, but what I what I will ask him if I get the chance, you know, I'll probably have to prep for a, for an hour or something before you know. Yeah, see, before I see. if I bump I into it by do. accident, this isn't going to come out <laughs> right. But basically, I want I'll want to find something he's done that's just bat spit, right? The absolutely oh, yeah. crazy that thing be too hard that to he find. has done and confront him about that. You probably and, only need five minutes of research to find that. Right. Something awful he has advocated doing to, to people would be okay, but if he's actually voted to do it to people, and especially if it's hypocritical or something like that, I'd want to talk to him about that and just work on that and then have a couple backup questions, expecting him to say nothing and then just have yep. like a... Like if you if you can... That's another thing with ambush interviews is if you can... If you can plan out the confrontation somewhat carefully, like I had a, I had an incident where I was confronting a state child protective services type bureaucrat, mm-hmm. um, and in her, this is a fairly hostile environment, an unusually hostile environment for me to face because I had a lot of different people coming after me. One of them assaulted me. One of them told me to leave. One of them, everybody's mm-hmm. coming after me this day uh, because of these three speakers that they're really trying to keep anyone from filming. <laughs> And um, so uh, uh, as the last one leaves, right, I've had a chance to get all the fight out of me, right? I'm mm-hmm. fairly sleepy by this by this time, and I've had a chance to really think through exactly what I'm going to ask her. I know who's coming out. I know she's going to come out within the next 10 minutes, and the planning enabled me to just get all these questions out just right, just with the huh. right tone, just with the right demeanor, because Americans care so much more about demeanor than whether you're in the right. How did she handle it? Um, she, well, she was gonna, she ignored me, and I yep. knew she would ignore me. But I just thought, how do I make the most out of I this think, ignoring I, process? I love your question that you've been uh, that you asked the bureaucrats at the school board meeting when they ignored you was like some sort of question like, "Well, do you think it's appropriate for you to be not answering questions of taxpayers?" Because that really puts them on the spot. Well, right? you know, I need to learn like ten different ways to say that right yeah. so that it becomes ten different questions because I'm starting to say that over <laughs> and over again to people that, that that ignore me, and I need to come up with something new, but. Uh, yeah, that's I'm entertained thing. But every again, time. But then again, at that point, sometimes I start getting angry, right? And if that happens, yeah, I start looking like the bad guy. So right. I have you have to have a real 
tight control. Not tight, but uh, uh, you just have to be. You have to just sound level-headed the whole mm-hmm. time if you can. And you guys did it part of the time, and then part of the time you didn't, which is exactly where I am, right? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm able to be uh, sound level-headed part of my, part of my answering process, and sometimes I just get a little angry when I start asking questions and I start sounding shrill, and yeah. the shrillness will really turn uh, the neutral people off. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But if you can maintain that sort of calm demeanor, like you have done, and you know, in many cases, um, inconsistently, right? Yeah. Uh, if you can do that, then you avoid being hated by the middle. You know. Well, I don't know if you can totally avoid being hated. Uh, By the middle, but, yes. Yeah. Generally. I guess it just depends. It, you know, I don't even know what the middle is or who that is. Oh, I can tell you exactly what it is. is. Yeah. It's centrists, people who are, you know, the up, down, mm-hmm. right, left spectrum, the up being authoritarian, down being <laughs> libertarian, They're right just being right, left being left. They're, in, they're near that center point on that two dimensional. Uh, graph. Toll free number tonight is 855 450 free. And of course, you can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Should you be eating LSD for breakfast? That's the question being asked over at vice.com. We will find out more about that coming up here in hour three. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, June 17th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.98 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $256. Antiwar.com reports in a 78 to 21 vote, the U.S. Senate yesterday added an amendment to the upcoming military funding bill formally banning any U.S. government agency from engaging in torture and requiring them to provide Red Cross access to any detainee, no matter how secretive. Despite a wide margin of victory, the bill was opposed by a large number of the Senate's leaders, including Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and assorted other hawks. Senator Marco Rubio, the lone senator not present, says he would have voted against 
position as well on the grounds that the U.S. should not tell the enemy whether or not they're going to get tortured beforehand. The amendment, assuming it survives the eventual reconciliation with the House version of the National Defense Authorization Act, will effectively require all government agencies to comply with the Army's public manual on the treatment of detainees and abide by the Geneva Convention against torture. While rights groups are generally supportive of the passage, Human Rights Watch counsel Laura Pitter noted that the CIA has been carrying out torture in ways that were formally against the law in the first place and cautioned that a future administration would likely just ignore the rule if they were in a torture kind of mood. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a New York State Appeals Court heard arguments on Tuesday over unsailing minutes of a grand jury that declined to indict a New York police officer in the chokehold death of an unarmed man. A coalition of groups seeking release of the transcripts told the four-judge panel that grand jury secrecy undermined confidence in the justice system and hampered debate among state lawmakers weighing grand jury reforms. The groups, which include the Legal Aid Society, want the appeals court to overturn a Staten Island justice's decision in March to bar release of records of the grand jury that probed the death of Eric Garner last year. New York Civil Liberties attorney Art Einsberg told the justices of the Supreme Court Appellate Division 2nd Department, the secrecy only reinforces suspicion and there is deep suspicion here in the comments of color and among other things. Garner, a father of six, died when a New York police officer, Daniel Pantaleo, held him in a chokehold during his arrest in July on suspicion he was selling loose cigarettes. The incident caught on video was among the cases that sparked a nationwide protest over police treatment of of minorities. Garner's last words, I can't breathe, have become a rallying cry for protesters, but Assistant District Attorney for Staten Island, Ann Grady, contended that breaching the practice of keeping grand jury records secret would not restore public confidence. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports billionaire Donald Trump has announced that he will run for the Republican nomination for the 2016 presidential campaign on Tuesday. Trump said, announcing his campaign, Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for president of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. Trump, worth about $9 billion, spoke at an 11 a.m. rally at Trump Tower in New York City. He added, Our country is in serious trouble. We don't have victories anymore. When was the last time anybody saw us beating, let's say, China in a trade deal? They kill us. I beat China all the time. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They laugh at us, at our stupidity. He said that Mexico is killing us economically. Trump, famous for his wealth, real estate finesse, and The Apprentice reality TV show, had previously toyed with the idea of the presidency before. He talked about running in the presidential elections in 2008 and again in 2012, but never formally announced. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Jared Gilchrist was surfing when he was attacked by a shark that took his leg. Thanks for being with us, big guy. Thanks, this is tight. What was going through your mind when you first realized that you were there with a shark all alone in open water? I felt like a total badass. It bent to my leg and started shaking it back and forth, and at that point I just felt, yes, this is sweet. I can't imagine what it would have been like to see the teeth sinking into your leg like that. It was sick. At one point, I just saw my leg just floating there in the water. It was awesome. Okay, we're joined now via satellite by Dr. Brian Caddy. What condition was Jared's leg in when you first saw him? 
It was in pretty rough shape. Uh, the shark had scissored through the muscle, and it was all just like hanging off the bone. It was uh, it was nuts. Yeah, I kept touching it. It was slimy as hell. Yeah, totally. It was uh, it was insane. Well, doctor, how do you deal with something like this? Well, you know, you're never fully prepared for an injury this freaking cool. Uh, you know, we just tried to stop the blood loss and took a bunch of photos because it's hysterical to freak out the nurses with gnarly shit like this. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, and you can join us here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. In the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian Ridley. That's Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com. Coming up, the Vice.com Munchies blog asks Should you be eating LSD for breakfast? But first, a disturbing story out of California about Uber. Uh, Dave, are you familiar with Uber? Yes. How would you describe it? Well, it's one of those two organizations that I tried to get set up with and couldn't for some reason. Cause as a, as one a of writer? The, whichever one I was trying to get set up with as a writer, they mm -hmm. wanted like credit card information. Yep. And after I gave it to them, it didn't work. And I just threw oh, my hands yeah. up. The other one worked even worse. But I can't remember wow. which one failed, whether it was, well, they both failed, but I can't remember which one Where was, was the credit this? card one and which one wasn't. I tried to set up a ride in New Hampshire. Oh, in New Hampshire. Yeah. I know they did open up in Manchester as uh, I think Uber is operating there. Um, but I, I'm i sorry that you had such a bad time with it. I've tried Uber and it worked for me. But then again, I don't mind putting a credit card number. Well, uh, I'm not necessarily against that. It was yeah. a downer to notice that I had to do that. It'd but be then nice to use af Bitcoin. After that, uh, it didn't even work when I, when I put it in. That's too um, bad. So they, did I it did say? contact like customer error? service. They did get back to me and then I just... I just didn't yeah. do anything else after that. I got bored. Was it like some on. sort of error with the program where it was crashing or just so did it say? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Because I know this is about I, four months ago, so I've kind of forgotten exactly yeah. what happened. I know that when I first tried it, it didn't work, but that was because I was in Austin, Texas at the time where basically Austin City Council was prohibiting uh, Uber from operating in the city limits. So when I tried to get a ride with Uber, they put a notice up on the screen saying, we're sorry, but we're not able to do business here right now. And Uber has been under fire uh, as well as Lyft and some of the other ride-sharing groups. But Uber and Lyft are the two biggest. And they've been under fire in various different parts, not just in the United States, but around the world. Lots of uh, countries and states have been cracking down on Uber and attempting to force it into the taxi cab regula uh, re regulatory code, which essentially Uber objects to because, by all definitions, they are not a taxi company. They don't have a, a taxi fleet their drivers are not using Uber's cars. They're using their own cars. The drivers are essentially independent contractors who can set their own schedules. So, you know, unlike an employee where you know, with an employee, the boss says you need to come in on these days and between these times, whereas an independent contractor can kind of set their own hours and come in and do things when they want to. So Uber drivers can drive when they feel comfortable driving. If they want to drive at night and take the kind of riders that you're going to get at, uh, at night or the kind of fares you'll get at night, then they can do that. If they want to work for an hour, they can do that. If they want to work for eight, ten hours, they can certainly do that as well. And so it's a completely different situation than a taxi cab company. In a taxi cab, if your uh, car has an issue, you take it back into the, the company garage and the company is responsible for fixing it typically. But if your car has an issue when you're an Uber driver, it's your responsibility uh, for fixing that. So it's two different worlds and Uber has been fighting and spending a lot of money I imagine, on attorneys to fight these various different court cases that are going on everywhere. It all defeats the purpose. I mean, the idea is that shouldn't you be able to have a taxi service that's not doing all this government stuff so that it can be cheaper? But now they're having to do all this government stuff. They're just yep. going to become gradually more and more like the regular taxi companies, if nothing else, because of the fact that they have all these additional expenses and have to charge more and that kind of thing. Yep, for sure. And now in California, which of course is one of the least free pl uh, places in the United States, now, California is attempting to force Uber into a business model that they did not create for themselves. So here's the latest news from the New York Times uh, in what could prove to be a ruling with serious implications for some of the Silicon Valley's fastest growing technology companies and the work they are creating. The California Labor Commission, so not a court, just a regulatory board, said that a driver for the ride hailing service Uber should be classified as an employee and not 
an independent contractor. Even though they're independent contractors. The ruling ordered Uber to reimburse Barbara Ann Berwick, a former Uber driver, $4,100 in expenses and other costs for the eight-week period for uh, or so that she worked as a driver for the service last year, while Uber has long positioned itself as merely an app that connects drivers and passengers. With no control over the hours its drivers work, the Labor Commission cited many instances in which it said Uber acted more like an employer. The ruling reignited a long-simmering debate over whether the work being created by online services and apps like Uber, Lyft, and Instacart are the right kinds of work opportunities for both the economy and for workers and could influence other legal actions over the classification of such workers. I love how they're asking the question, uh, is it the right kind of work opportunity for the economy and for workers? Well, that's that's not up to some board to decide. That's the general market's job to decide. It's your job, my job, to decide. If it's right then customers will use it. If it's right, then the drivers will use it. And if it's wrong, then the drivers will say, the hell with this, this is a crappy deal, I'm out of here. And the customers, you know, if they're having bad experiences, they're not going to come back. The government is saying the, the, we, the nature isn't fast enough at killing off the dodo bird. We need to kill more dodo birds. Oh, they want to kill or, Uber. Is or what nature they kill. isn't fast enough at killing off this pleasant looking dove. We need to kill it, even though it wasn't on the extinction list. They want to kill Uber and Lyft to make room for the taxi cab companies who've been around forever and who are very obedient to regulation and who are very upset. And surly and ineffective and right. expensive and, and they're lacking butthurt. competition. And yeah, they're butthurt about Uber and, and, uh, and Lyft basically eating their lunch. I mean, Uber and Lyft come into the market with these innovative flexible, you know, new ways of doing oh, business. giving your credit card information away. <laughs> well, I, I mean, we'd all love for Uber to take uh, Bitcoin, but that hasn't hasn't yet happened, unfortunately. Well, so I would someday. have been okay with just paying with George Washington's, but that wasn't an option either. Oh, I see what you mean. So. It's credit card only. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you had to give your, I had to give my credit card information to get a pickup. Yeah, that's true. On and one of them. Again, I can't remember which service it was. It was either Uber it's or It's probably Lyft. both of them. I, I've done Uber, and I know they do credit card. I suspect Lyft works the same way. The rationale for that, Dave, would be that uh, essentially it would mean that the driver would not necessarily be carrying cash. So Yeah, and it's, so it's still a step in the right direction, yeah. even if they're if they're asking for this. It's a safe, It's really a safety issue more so than, than anything else. I mean, obviously, somebody could stick a gun to the driver's head and take the car. Uh, but you know, there's it's not uncommon for taxi cab drivers to get robbed uh, in the course of doing business, and so if the driver has no cash, there's, there's really not much the robbery could uh, could be successful with. It, it's like a cop once told me when I was a neighborhood watcher: these restrictions on you enable the program to exist. Without these restrictions on you, we can't have the program. So, so the technology companies have contended their virtual marketplaces, in which people act as independent contractors and use their own possessions. To provide services to the public at the touch of a smartphone button, and that affords workers flexibility and freedom. Yet labor activists and others have said such roles with people working as freelancers and having little certainty over their wages and job status are simply a way for companies like Uber to minimize costs, even as they maintain considerable control over drivers' workplace behavior. They say that such control is typically the hallmark of an employee relationship, which should bring with it benefits. Oh, red flag. Oh, the... The minute Uber stops having a lot of control over its drivers, the government will be complaining that they have stopped having a lot of control over their drivers. Well, I think what they're referring to is uh, like the behavior of the driver, having certain standards for how the driver is is supposed to look or perhaps the government will demand that. So how can they be complaining about that? That's a good point. Uh, Well, it's not necessarily the government, but it's the activists in this case that are lobbying the Labor Commission. Now, the Labor Commission would be the the government arm here, but there are these busybody activists who are trying to basically force Uber into a business model that they did not create. And one of them is a former Uber driver? Uh, some some Uber drivers, yeah. There's some some of these people, you know. They're basically socialists. They're basically characters from a George frigging Lucas movie called. Well, if you remember that the THX 1138, the one right before Star Wars, where these guy the guy spends his life building these robots, and they spend it. their lives controlling him. Wow! Right, <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what this la- well any of these drivers who are trying to get on board with all this regulation they're basically they're building they're they're building the destruction of themselves. They're, that's true. It, it's. They're trying to force Uber to give them benefits and uh, more more money and what they call greater job security. These aren't jobs, though. These are independent contract workers who can work at their leisure. So when they're protesting, people can say, get a job to them? 
Well, I guess. The <laughs> classification of freelancers is in dispute among a number of industries, including at other transportation companies, and the debate is sent to escalate as the number of online companies like Uber, Airbnb, and others rises. Venture capitalists have poured, poured more than $9.4 billion into those startups, known as on-demand companies, since 2010, according to data from CB Insights. Uh, blah, blah, blah. For anybody who has to pay the bills and has a family, having no labor protections and no job security is at its best a mixed blessing said Robert Reich, former Secretary of Labor and Professor of Public Policy at the University of California, Berkeley. The little we'll Bolshevik. More. We'll talk more about it coming up here in moments. Uh, 855-450 free. You're welcome to comment if you're an Uber driver or anybody. It's Free Talk Live. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? Uh, MBA? Uh, nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? Uh, the answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited to join us, should you like. No, it isn't. And you're not Ian, and I'm not Ridley. This is not uh, the Opposites Day, Dave. Uh, I stopped playing Opposites Day back in elementary school, didn't you? Well, if I was to say... Anything else, it would be repetition. So this is a good point. Well, you know, you got to repeat. You got to keep the phone people numbers. on their toes while they're listening to Free Talk Live. It's, we can't just let them sit there and listen. Repetition is very important in, in radio and in television as well, as you know. I mean, uh, you've got some really catchy advertising on RidleyReport.com where you sing the advertising. Uh, well, sort of sing in some cases. Uh, or awkwardly sometimes state. Sometimes it's, it's more like grunting. Yeah, uh, and people love it. They. Love well, they it. hate it, actually. Or they, or they hate it. That's true. It is a love-hate thing. Uh, I love it. Some hate it. I yeah. only hear from the people who love it. How about that? I don't hear from the people. I guess you, if, if you read the comments, people will probably... I can't believe yeah. you're bringing down the libertarian movement by singing. Oh, you've been accused of that for singing? Really? <laughs> well, you know, of singing URL. He sounds so silly. He's being silly. You can't be silly. You must wear an American oh, flag right. tie and a suit, and you must wear a fedora and, you know... The- if uh, if you're not if you're being too silly, then libertarians won't be taken seriously. Something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I say be silly. It's fun to be silly. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. And Dave, you're doing it right over at oh, RidleyReport.com. And by the way, you know what? Uh, if you want to get gold and silver, we've got the connection for you. It's Midas Resources. We've been working with them for a long time. In fact, they're the company that's behind the syndicate that gets us on over 150 radio stations from coast to coast. So it's a great company to support when you buy gold and silver because you're supporting Free Talk Live. So what you want to do is go to silver.freetalklive.com. They've got some great hand-picked gold and silver pieces. Whether you're interested in gold and silver as a hedge against inflation, investment, or a barter currency, they can help you. And they're super friendly and really great at what they do. 877-857-9938. That's the toll-free number for Midas Resources. Again, that number is 877 877- 857 9938 or visit silver.freetalklive.com. We're talking about a disturbing story out of California where a California regulatory board, the California Labor Commission, has determined that they believe that Uber drivers should not be considered independent contractors but should be considered employees. And this is going to have some pretty serious ramifications, I think, if Uber continues doing business in California. And it would be interesting to see if Uber is going to leave California as a result of this particular decision being made, because essentially it's going to completely change their business model and probably make it unsustainable. Let's go to John in New Mexico. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Ridley. Hello, John. Hello. Thank you for uh, taking my call. John, where are you listening to us uh, in, or from, rather? uh, From Albuquerque, New Mexico. Excellent. So you're tuned in Kiva tonight. Go ahead, John. Well, I, I, I agree with you guys. I, I think there's two parts to this. I, I think that if someone chooses to be a contractor and makes an agreement with the company, they should be allowed to do that. And and I don't think there should be any type of like regulation there. I, I do admit, though, and I do have a friend of mine that owns a cab company, very conservative, um, very much a believer in capitalism. Uber, in a way, though, is getting away with murder here by not, you know, they basically, what's the business model of Uber? The business model is pretty simple. Somebody needs a ride, they go pick them up and take them somewhere. That really sounds like a cab company to me. Well, um, no, it's I mean, not a cab company cab because cab companies have a fleet and Uber does not have okay. a fleet. And a cab company okay. has, you know, there are certain things that cab companies do for their cabs that Uber does not do. So because cab, the Uber does not have a fleet, Uber is not responsible for repairing uh, the cars of the individual drivers. It's a completely different organization. And, while and even, they, if it, even if it is a, ta- a cab company by common sense, it might not be defined as a cab company legally. under the law. Under the law. And they're, you know, okay, well, I get that. I, I, I get that. But at the same time, I mean, it, it is kind of a backdoor offering basically the same business model that cab companies are doing and without the problem is any of the standards well, well the, I, without having to meet any of the standards so now, i mean if, if, well it, it, it doesn't seem really fair it doesn't so, seem fair at all life's not and fair plus, the, 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 well, the, well no it's not but what happens but this is what's going to happen because again I, I i wish there was some middle ground on this i think they California is ridiculous, and of course, in all the laws they do and things, treat them like, an, look, if you want to be a contractor, you're a contractor. Nonetheless, what is going to happen is that there is going to be uh, eventually an Uber driver that's drunk, 
that kills some. I mean, it's going to it is going to open. Well, the door we need to, to open know, up a pre-crime center happen. so that we can you know arrest people before they commit their crimes. Obviously, but no. Minority but Report forever. You do John, have to be proactive. I mean, here's what I'd like to know: How it is, is a reg- government regulation going to stop a cabbie from drinking on the job? Not saying it's going to stop a government. I'm not saying government regulation is the answer, but I am saying then, is it fair for cab companies, regardless if they have a fleet or what, to have to go through all these standards and regulations? No, it's not. There shouldn't be cab I'm regulations saying, either. I'm not saying. Okay, there you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. So, I mean, that has to be the discussion. Here is that if you've been in business as a cab company for a number of years, then, you know, you have to go through, of course you're going to get killed. I mean, you have to. If you're going to have to spend more on regulations, you're going to have to charge more. So Uber comes in, and that's fine that they did. But they come in from the back door and then just say, well, you know, these guys are contractors and we're offering rides. Yeah, they came up with a smart way. That's capitalism. They came up with a smart way to connect the customer with the, you know, with the provider and, you know, take some of their liability out of it and and put the liability on the drivers and the and the riders and people are willing to take those risks. They should be free to make those choices. Look, I get the I get the claim that oh, these poor cab companies, they've been screwed by regulations the whole time, so everybody else should get screwed. But well, that's not that that shouldn't be the issue. That shouldn't be where people are coming from on this. If you care about freedom, you should be advocating for the end of all taxi regulations and let the market decide what regulations to put in place. Let third party certifiers come in and certify that a cab is uh, is safe to ride in if that's what people really want. Really all the cab company regulators do is protect the cab companies from competition. That's why they want Uber put out of business because these cab companies are desperate. They want the government to protect them, and that's exactly what the government is doing. They're not protecting consumers. They're protecting the established order. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. But I can see the argument from the cab companies saying, look, you know, we do have a business model here. This is what it is. I mean, that's at the heart of it. What is the business model? Somebody calls. They need a ride, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and so that's, that's exactly what – and that's what Uber is basically doing – Without having to meet any of the of the regulations involved in that kind Thank of thing. Thank goodness! Model. No wonder they're more affordable in a lot of cases than uh, driving in a cab. But, I, you, but I, do you really believe that if cab companies could operate the same way, they wouldn't? Of course they would. They should I be mean, allowed to. The, the cab. Thing. The cab. Well, that's comp- what I'm saying. Yeah. They need freedom that's what I'm too. Saying. Right. I'm with I'm you there, but unfortunately, the cab that. companies aren't arguing for freedom. So until the cab companies well, start arguing for freedom, to are. hell with them. Some, no, no, but some are. See, that's the thing. Some, okay, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Some are trying to say, look, fine that Uber's doing their thing. Are you with a cab is, company? Just curious. A, no, no. My friend owns a cab company. Ah, okay. It's a well, small good. one here and out, but, it, but, but that's the same thing. And that's what he's saying. He doesn't care about Uber. He's not saying Uber's killing. He's saying, good. look. What we need I is cab civil disobedience. We need, we need cabbies getting out there and just giving people rides without asking government permission first. And I would get behind any Absolutely. cab company that does that. Absolutely. Thank you, John, for the call tonight. Thanks, any John. cab company who has the balls to come out against the regulators, I'll support them, man. I'll ride in their cab. I love that idea. But unfortunately, most of them are too scared to do that. They don't want to have their license pulled. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. More coming up on Uber. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. A meme 
is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free to share your thoughts on Uber and the regulations that now may be crammed down their throat in California, uh, where California Regulatory Board has said that Uber has been treating their drivers like employees, so they ought to give them benefits like employees. However, of course, Uber's argument is that, in point of fact, the people who work for Uber are not actually working as employees because they aren't required to show up at a certain place or time at a specific time. They are not uh, cab companies either because, you know, they don't have cabs. It's their drivers that have the cabs, whereas in a normal cab company, it's the cab company that provides the drivers uh, with the cabs. An employee is somebody who has a schedule. They are being told to show up somewhere at a specific time. And I'm sure there are other legal definitions of, of employee, but that's one of the big ones, right? And a, an independent contractor is someone who sets their own hours on their own terms. And so let me go on with the story here. It's from the New York Times. Uh, let's see. This is an interview. Well, they're, they're interviewing Robert Reich, who's a former. I think it's Reich. I think is Reich? how he says it. Oh, it looks like Reich, like the Third Reich. Well, it, maybe it <laughs> should be, but no, it's it's Reich. <laughs> anyway, he's a former la sec Secretary of Labor. He says, for anybody who has to pay the bills and has a family, having no labor protections and no job security is at best a mixed blessing. At worst, it's a nightmare. Obviously, some workers prefer to be independent contractors, but mostly they take these jobs because they cannot find better ones. 
Well, yeah. he knows exactly how everything should be mm-hmm. for every contractor and employee. Well, we should put him in charge. I think he is, apparently. Well, he seems to think he is. Uh, well, actually, he's, oh, excuse me, he works for the University of California. He's not <sighs> on the Labor Commission. He but, used to be in the, he's a Fed, though. He used to be in the federal government. Right. Yeah. What was that, Clinton administration or yeah, Bush? Yeah, yeah, Clinton. The like, it, like it makes any difference. Right. The California Labor Commission's ruling was made June 3rd and came to light after Uber filed an appeal on Tuesday evening, noting that the company provided drivers with phones and had a policy of deactivating its app if drivers were inactive for 180 days. Quote, defendants hold themselves out as nothing more than a neutral technological platform designed simply to enable drivers and passengers to transact the business of transportation, wrote the Labor Commission about Uber, continuing saying, quote, the reality, however, is that defendants are involved in every aspect of the operation. Said Labor Commission did not respond to requests for comment. The ruling does not apply beyond Ms. Berwick. Again, there was one particular driver here who had gone to the California Labor Commission and asked for some sort of reimbursement. Uh, And it may be altered if Uber's appeal is successful. In a statement, Uber said the decision was non-binding and applies to a single driver, unquote. The company said individual cases about worker classifications in at least other states, five other states, including Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Texas, have resulted in rulings that categorize drivers as independent contractors. So in other states, these uh, various different cases have affirmed that Uber is in an independent contractor relationship with these folks. Politicians, lawyers, and others quickly seized upon the California Labor Commission ruling as one that could have major repercussions among some of the fastest-growing Silicon Valley startups, of which Uber is the most prominent. Quote, today's ruling from the California labor, labor regulators demonstrates why federal policymakers need to re-examine the 20th century definitions and employment classification we're attempting to apply to a 21st century workforce, said Senator Mark Warner, a Democrat from Virginia. As many as one-third of American workers are participating in some aspect of the contingent workforce, and we have a responsibility to provide clarity and predictability instead of allowing inconsistency and confusion as these issues are litigated on a case-by-case and state-by-state basis. Okay, I have to give him credit where credit is due. That would be a step forward if the authorities were consistent and predictable and you understood when you were and were not violating the law. But he's talking about changing the definitions of employee and independent contractor, basically. He's, yeah, I'm sure he's probably got no good up his sleeve. Right. But he's saying we need to protect theory, the independent contractors. In theory, it would be a drastic step toward freedom if we just knew when we were breaking the law. Yeah, We'll never know happen. that with 200,000 pages of federal code. And that's definitely not what he was proposing. Jeremiah in Albuquerque, listening to Kiva, you're on Free Talk Live. How's it going? You're on the air. Go ahead, sir. Uh, well, I hear you talking about Uber, and I have um, I work work for FedEx Ground, and uh, they're they basically use the independent contractor model. Really? Or like, yeah, yeah, they contracted out. They in fact just paid out two hundred and eighty eight million dollars in California for misclassifying their employees. They 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 call them uh, independent contractors, but they treat them like employees. And in my case. Uh, I worked for a company called FedEx, which or called Purple Wings, which contracted for FedEx. Mm-hmm. And in that, I was actually forced to attend two safety meetings a week run by the head guy at FedEx at the terminal there while, while not being paid for my time at all. Hmm. So, so that was part of the deal oh, of wow. being an independent contractor? That, no, 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 no. When I started with the company, when I started driving for FedEx, there was no safety meeting. I never agreed to go to this safety meeting. In fact, I felt I shouldn't have had to go to the safety meeting because it was run by FedEx. FedEx wasn't paying me for my time. And you say, you say, well, they, you know, you can show up whenever you want, but FedEx wasn't like that. So this you isn't. So this wasn't. This time. safety meeting wasn't part of your contract. So therefore, no, were they were they trying to modify the contract part. later on? Yeah, yeah. They, they, that's exactly what they did. Was they they modified the contract. They they made my contractor crack down on all the drivers because me and a bunch of other drivers in the very beginning we revolted. We said no, we're not going to do it. You can't make us do it, and they couldn't. And the way they did it was to crack down on the contractors and say, well, if you can't get your drivers to go into the safety meeting, then we're going to fine you. 
And the contractors, of course, said, okay, well, that's what we'll do then. Well, you still we'll could have walked, though, right? Like, if they were trying to change the terms. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I could have I walked. But, you know, I have this whole responsibility thing going on, mortgage, car notes. Yeah, sure. That's how they get you. So exactly, exactly. What they do is they treat you like a slave, okay? Let me let me explain something. I started. I was really good. I was better. When I started, I was better than most of the drivers there. So what did they do? Did they, did they give me a raise? Did they give me a promotion? No. They said, here's 30% more route for you to run. I said, okay, great. 30% more. I'm going to see 30% more money, right? And they just kind of laughed and clapped huh. me on the back and said, you don't understand how salary works, son. You're going to do it. And salary. if you don't like it, you can walk. Yeah, salary. I, I was paid a daily salary of $145 a day, not uh. hourly. So I could work an 18-hour day. Yeah. But, you know, they don't care. And it basically, when it, when it breaks down to that, when you're working the 16 and the 14-hour days, you're really only making about eight nine dollars an hour. So just to be clear on so something, you're, you're thing working thing. for this. So there's the company that is the the company is the contractor with FedEx. Are you also an independent contractor with that company? No 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 no. I'm an employee. You're an employee of, that of the company. Yeah yeah. That's ah. how they, they, they as, as the lawsuits go through the courts, they they've changed it. But they're still they're still treating me like. FedEx treats me like an employee, which means, in my opinion, they should give me benefits. Did you know that FedEx Ground, and I believe it was the first quarter of this year, made $3.9 billion? Think about that for one second, because the reality of that is FedEx Ground did not deliver one single box. Every single box delivered by FedEx Ground was delivered by a contractor. Interesting. So FedEx Ground made $3.9 billion. $0.8 billion more than expected. So okay. you're saying all of those Do FedEx trucks, that, every single one of them is operated by no, no, no. an independent contractor? If, if it's a FedEx ground, it's it's operated by a contractor. Look on any FedEx ground truck that you see. I'm sure you have one that comes right to the station. Talk yep. to your FedEx guy. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. Make and you're wage. wearing FedEx clothing, so right? You're wearing FedEx and logos you're and things driving like that. a 20-foot, a 20-foot one FedEx truck. It's interesting. Half the town I live in knows me as, quote-unquote, the FedEx guy. Do you understand what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see where you're coming from. That's definitely, uh, I mean, it definitely seems kind of sneaky. And I thank you, Jeremiah, for the call tonight. The uh, toll-free number here, if you want to share your thoughts, independent contracting uh, or whatever's on your mind, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I want to analyze that here a little bit because there's some shifty things going on with that situation, I think. It's Free Talk Live. 855 450 free. More coming up. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shaquettes. Reminding you that anytime, anytime is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of Gold Bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting? You said it, ladies. Stay cool with Gold Bond powder spray. Stay cool with Gold Bond. <laughs> We the people grow cotton, weep fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy, and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. 
We don't just sell the products, we live it. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to play online poker with Bitcoin, you need a site that's trustworthy and technically sound. The site managers of SWCPoker.eu have proven their commitment to bringing you great gameplay from a site you can trust, SWCPoker.eu. They have lots of new games too, including Chinese poker, and their Krill leaderboard is open right now. It's a beautiful site, easy to use with lots of players. Go on over to SWCPoker.eu now and have some fun with your Bitcoin, SWCPoker.eu. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you're welcome to join us here. In the remaining moments, we may have enough time for you if you dial now to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, you can also call us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. With you in studio, it's Ian Ridley. Dave Ridley's here from RidleyReport.com. And if you support Free Talk Live, you like what we're doing here on the radio waves, you can help us get on more radio stations. We've got over 150 today, but we could have 300, 400, 500. It's possible, but it does take money and time to market the station or market the show to stations so we can get on more uh, broadcast transmitters out there, as well as expand our internet footprint and the satellite footprint. You can help us with that. In fact, I just actually uh, paid the bill for the upcoming year's worth of satellite coverage in Africa today, Yay. as well as North and Central America. So we'll be starting back in Africa on July 1st. Akko, you are my hero. Yes. Uh, well, Akko probably can't hear us tonight because we don't, we're not on in Africa. He does. He, uh, he's not able to listen to archives either. He does not live in a town that has internet. So yeah, again, that's just part of why he's my hero. <laughs> yeah, so, so he, has what to drive, he has to go through. Yeah, he has to drive 40 kilometers, I think, to actually get to some place where he can use internet, but he has to then buy internet time, basically, and borrow someone's laptop. So uh, he has yeah. to go through a lot of steps to listen to. For those who, who are, are not constant listeners, Akko is a, a listener in Cameroon. Thank and you, He's yes. been going to heroic lengths to be able to listen to the show and spread it around other parts of Africa. Well, as soon as we're back on uh, the satellite, the free-to-air satellite over Africa will be on the Amos 5 satellite as a KU band transmission. As soon as we're back there, then all he'll have to do is go over to the satellite receiver and press the on button, and then he'll be able to receive and listen easily. So I'm excited about that. You can support that kind of outreach for Free Talk Live for five bucks a month and get perks, of course. You get you know bonuses like the AMP Only Facebook group, the AMP Only Forum, the AMP Only uh, podcast. Go and get the details. Get signed up for five dollars a month with any major credit card through PayPal or Visa or Mastercard right through our website at amp.freetalklive.com. A M P stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. AMP dot freetalklive.com as we go to your calls and thoughts we were talking about subcontracting uh uber is being accused of having what the california regulators in the labor commission are saying are employees but uber saying these are not employees they're subcontractors they are independent contractors and uh, you've got thoughts so let's go to them todd's in illinois listening to wrmn hello todd 
Hey, good evening. Uh, just a real quick resume. Um, I have a hired subcontractors. I've been a subcontractor. I currently have a business that does nothing but hire subcontractors. So here, here's the general rule, and I, and I run a company that's national. So the standard rule on a subcontractor is you can tell them what time they have to be at a place. Uh, you just can't tell them how to get the job done. Hmm. Or if you do, and you tell them they have to use a specific thing, like say mm, some newspaper carriers, you have to put your your newspapers in plastic. You can't provide the plastic for them. They'll have to buy the plastic, and they can get the plastic anywhere hmm. they want. You can buy it. They can buy them from the company, or they can buy them from outside source. They can't. The company can't even say you can't buy them from an outside source, because then you're then they're getting into that weird. You're an employee, not a. Then it's too micromanaged, so, so the therefore it's an employee. Okay. Okay. Exactly. So for the gentleman who works for FedEx, actually, he doesn't work for FedEx. He works for Purple Line. So right. when you're saying he deserved benefits, that would be like me saying that um, this retailer that I do a ton of work for owes me benefits because we do a bunch of work for them. That's insane. That would be like – I mean, that's just nuts. Uh, so it would be like saying to your biggest advertiser, you guys should receive benefits from that biggest advertiser because you do so much work for them advertising. I must have missed it when show. he said that. I, I I don't always hear everything that uh, that goes in my ears because I'm busy doing a few different things sometimes. So had he made that claim, I, I, I'll take your word for it. Uh, he was definitely ups, yeah, that's, upset that's definitely that FedEx amazing. was making a bunch of money. Um, but if he wants benefits, then he should be talking to his the company that employs him. You know? Whatever it was, or he's line. so passionate about things, maybe he should start his own company and hire his own guys and get a FedEx contract, and he'll be a very happy camper because it sounds like he's pretty pretty motivated to do better in his life. But that's a great point. Something that's, it's, a, it's a dirty risk. It's called risk. Yeah. He's going to have to risk time, effort, and money and put himself out there, and then he can know what it's like to be a boss one day and then wonder why he's eating craft dinner while all of his employees got a paycheck. Well, <laughs> Good you sound like you've. Uh, this is. You sound like this isn't your first rodeo. I have eight. I have eight craft dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and while my employees eat steak, but then, you know, at the end of the day, I eat filet and they're eating steak, so it's all good, you know. But that's the, that's the risk you take being a boss. Being good perspective, Todd. Good. I appreciate you sharing it. Anything else you want to throw out there tonight? Thanks. No, we're all good. Everything's going good. Thanks for the show. Thanks, guys. brother. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll free number. Is 855-450 free? So he makes some great points here. You know, the people who are in, you know, running these companies that are employing people, like the FedEx independent contractors, these guys are taking significant risks. And if you don't like the deal, then get out. And I, I understand that it's frustrating when you've got bills to pay, when you've got these obligations that you've created. But if if somebody's changing a deal on you, first of all, that's a bad contract, right? Because we had a guy earlier who was saying, the guy who was working for the company that contracts with FedEx, he was saying that they all of a sudden changed the deal, that all of a sudden now they've got to go to these meetings. Yeah, they, it's like, it's like it was Darth, uh, Darth, Vader, Darth Vader to Lando Calrissian, you know, I, we had a deal. I now alter the bargain. Yeah, that's not a good deal, and that's something you probably want to walk away from. And you know, and generally in, in an agreement, you should be able to be free to walk away from it if somebody's trying to change the terms on you. Now, I don't know what the contract looks like. I don't know what the, the terms are. But when um, the thing I guess I was confused about with his call initially was whether he was an independent contractor, and he clarified that he is not. He is an employee of the independent contractor for FedEx. So the employer, of course, can make up new rules as they go along, generally, from what I've seen. But if it's part of the contract, if it's not part of the contract that you have to go to these meetings and you're an independent contractor, well, then I think you'd be totally legitimate to say this isn't part of our agreement. You can't just change the terms. And if you're entering into a contract where one side of the contract can change the terms arbitrarily, you don't actually have a contract. You've got them telling you everything they want you to do and you being unable to do anything but walk away from it. And you always do have that freedom to walk away, even though it can hurt, right? Like if you've got some fancy car you're making payments on and you're making payments on a house and you've got kids' mouths to feed, it can feel very, very restrictive to to have the option to walk away. Even though that option is there, you feel like you're caught between a rock and a hard place in that situation. And I can certainly empathize with somebody in that situation, but then maybe you've spent beyond your means. Maybe you shouldn't have that car. Maybe you shouldn't have bought the 50-inch TV or whatever it is that has put you in a, an uncomfortable position financially to where you feel like you have to hang on to this undesirable position. 
that sucks. I mean, I can definitely see why that's frustrating to the gentleman who called earlier. Hank is also in Albuquerque listening to Kiva. Hank, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Ridley. Hey, guys. Just want to say thanks for having the show sure. and bring, bringing it out to New Mexico. You know, we're trying to build liberty up in this state and really the rest of the Rockies. And you're, you're a real asset to the movement. So well, thanks, thanks for Hank. coming on. Here's what, here's what you really need uh, to thank. You need to, to call uh, Kiva and thank the program director there. His name's Eddie. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, tell Eddie, him Eddie knows. Eddie, Eddie's doing a great job. Good deal. He's doing a great job. But, hey, guys, I just, you know, work for me since leaving high school. I left college one semester short. I've You know, work hasn't been the most stable for me. Let's say at a, you know, regular retail storefront kind of place, some sort of IT place, whatever. It's always been an independent contracting kind of uh environment for where I'm at, especially here in New Mexico, because if you don't have a job with the government or the local university or public schools or the hospitals, and and in addition to the government, you're on your own. And there's a lot of people Mm -hmm. like me who I think here in New Mexico and probably a lot of the West, too, who, you know, they refuse to go for the government handout. They refuse to get on the welfare lines because why would they? I mean, it's it's soul crushing. So we end yep. up being independent contractors because we can't find the work that's in the private sector. And of course, you, we we're not bending our knees and kissing you know what to get the government jobs and retain those government jobs. So to me, like we've got to protect the independent contractors, ind- protect the contract itself because. Those are elements that are just, I mean, just about right down to the the foundations of what I think liberty is. It's a voluntary exchange of the work you want, you need done. I'm willing to do it at this price. Let the free market bid on it. And guess what? I'm going to hustle to get that contract and also get another three so I can continue making the target money I want. There's no way in heck I would want to be employed by somebody uh, and then, of course, be getting my safe paycheck every week or whatever with my safe benefits, and there's no way I would want that. There, that would be undercapping my potential and my mm. company and my own uh, That's an interesting. I'm really glad you called with that perspective because, you know, that's certainly a contrast to what was being said earlier. And I think it's important for people out there to remember that as an employee, nothing is safe. Your job could be gotten rid of tomorrow. And I think a lot of people feel very comfortable as an employee, and they don't really think about that, and so therefore they don't uh, save accordingly. And when finally uh, the job goes under, the company goes out of business, those people get a real shock to the system. Thanks for your attitude, Hank. I appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. And don't forget, ridleyreport.com for more of Dave Ridley. If you're looking for work, it's a process of elimination, and you're trying not to be eliminated. So here's a tip for making the cut, and this might seem subtle, but to the person interviewing you, it's not. There is a world of difference between applicants who convey, I need a job, and those who simply ooze, I want a to work, especially in these lean times when many you're competing with will seem desperate in I'll take anything mode. If you convey specific interest in this job at this company, you will be conspicuous. Thus, the value of going to school on the company you're applying to before the interview. With money and attention so tight now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999 and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks and cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Cop Block Radio is next after the news on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, June 17th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.98 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,179 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $256. Antiwar.com reports in a 78 to 21 vote, the U.S. Senate yesterday added an amendment to the upcoming military funding bill formally banning any U.S. government agency from engaging in torture and requiring them to provide Red Cross access to any detainee, no matter how secretive. Despite a wide margin of victory, the bill was opposed by a large number of the Senate leaders, including Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and assorted other hawks. Senator Marco Rubio, the lone senator not present, says he would have voted against it as well on the grounds that the U.S. should not tell the enemy whether or not they're going to get tortured beforehand. The amendment, assuming it survives the eventual reconciliation with the House version of the National Defense Authorization Act, will effectively require all government agencies to comply with the Army's public manual on the treatment of detainees and abide by the Geneva Convention against torture. While rights groups are generally supportive of the passage, Human Rights Watch Council Laura Pitter noted that the CIA has been carrying out torture in ways that were formally against the law in the first place and caution that a future administration would likely just ignore the rule if they were in a torture kind of mood. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a New York State Appeals Court heard arguments on Tuesday over unsailing minutes of a grand jury that declined to indict a New York police officer in the chokehold death of an unarmed man. A coalition of groups seeking release of the transcripts told the four-judge panel that grand jury secrecy undermined confidence in the justice system and hampered debate among state lawmakers weighing grand jury reforms. The groups, which include the Legal Aid Society, want the appeals court to overturn a Staten Island justice's decision in March to bar release of records of the grand jury that probed the death of Eric Garner last year. New York Civil Liberties attorney Art Einsberg told the justices of the Supreme Court Appellate Division 2nd Department, the secrecy only reinforces suspicion and there is deep suspicion here in the comments of color and among other things. Garner, a father of six, died when a New York police officer, Daniel Pantaleo, held him in a chokehold during his arrest in July on suspicion he was selling loose cigarettes. The incident, caught on video, was among the cases that sparked a nationwide protest over police treatment of minorities. Garner's last words, I can't breathe, have become a rallying cry for protesters, but Assistant District Attorney for Staten Island, Ann Grady, contended that breaching the practice of keeping grand jury records secret would not restore public confidence. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports billionaire Donald Trump has announced that he will run for the Republican nomination for the 